Daddy's dungeon. Daddy's what? The fuck is Daddy's dungeon? Daddy's dungeon. <laughs> Daddy's fucking dungeon. All of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? <laughs> Shake well oh, yeah. and somebody else, uh -huh. and I saw them on that tour, and like the tour after that, it was like it was kind of like like this like G five nine part two, um, like the basically these two girls came out and said that like Fat Nick and Puya like were just going nuts in the hotel room, Fuck. so he kind of got like soft canceled, but I guess like that shit got swept under the rug or like, you know it was it was kind of one of those things of just like people kind of just forgot about it. So like I'm kind of like kind of off him right now, but you know. Well, my thing with him, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. it's one day he'll post, "I'm done making music forever. I'm absolutely yeah. done," and then literally like three days later, hey guys, dropping a new album in three weeks. It's like, bro, where? Just make your mind yeah. already. Yeah, like, but I will say though, like his his track with Ghostman, <sighs> classic. Dude, and both he, of them. Both so of them. Both the one them. thing I do like about it is that when he plays it at every show, mm. he said. He will sing the Ghostman part for him every time, <laughs> just out of respect. I love it, love that. And he, he gets it word for word every single time. <laughs> Come on, he's, he's that's his like job. That. That's his job, bro. <laughs> you know, shout out, sh shout out him too. He's an insane skater. Who, Puya? Yeah. Insanely good. Really? Yeah, he's Absolutely. Really good. No way, I didn't know that. He's about it like that. Some some big skating page posted him recently because he did. He was like, oh, I'm finally back. A little rusty. Hits like some oh, gnarly shit. flip. Yeah. And I know. I know him. he's got ends with like FTP and all oh, those yeah, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's gnarly, bro. Yeah, but I didn't know that shit about Puya. Yeah, I mean it was it was like five or six years ago. So well, hardcore really like made me listen to lyrics because before I was just listening to music. Oh yeah. I never actually paid attention. Yeah. And then now I listen to like the lyrics, and lyrics yeah. are like wow. Yeah. Never never viewed music in a different way than this. Dude, it's it's it is truly life changing. It's awesome. It's, Dope shit. It's rewired our brains. 100%. 100%. But in the short time that we've been in, oh, yeah. it's rewired our brains that's, completely. That's the goal, man. You know? Like that's that's like that's everything. So. So with a, you said you've been in about 13 years, right? Uh give or take. Yeah. So I mean, how how much of a change do you think the rewiring has done? I mean, it's it's pretty much all I do in my spare time now. Like cuz you know, obviously I can I have like a 9 to 5 and like, you know, in high school and shit, I was very much like just kind of doing my thing, music-wise. For like, I was like, like, because I came from punk, so like, all of my shit was like playing in punk bands, going to punk shows, like, doing the punk thing. But then like, you know, I was like, oh yeah, this is like my weekend shit. But I got like, you know, serious. I was like going to school and shit. Yeah. And then when I got into hardcore, it was very much like, like, like you meet the lifers, and you see like how different it is to them, because like, you know, with with punk. Punk is very destructive, just inherently, especially now, you know. But like, with hardcore, it's got it's 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 there's a purpose to it. Like everybody's in it for a different reason, but in the end, like all those different reasons correlate one way or another. You know what I mean? And you, once you find the camaraderie of like bands you like, you always go see. I mean, you feel like like the people that you see at shows every weekend start bands. You get to see their bands, then their friends' bands start bands, and then they know X person or whatever. And it's like you realize that the scene's not that big. Like, like obviously, it's spread out across however long, like the whole country, whole world, whatever. But like, I realize that at any point ever, you are one to two people away from every band you listen to at any point. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's what hardcore's about. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because like you, you know, I mean, there's there's some bands who like try to like play the rock star thing because they're playing Santa Fury, they're going on tour with X band, they got a you know Taco Bell commercial, whatever the fuck, you know, pe people take it for granted oh. just inherently. It's you know it's the nature of the beast. I get that. It's like touring musician thing. I understand. But nine times out of ten, it's just dudes making music, you know, and like. Like you'll see like a band playing Santa Fury one day, and the next day they're at a, a minute hour show, just yeah. like kicking, and hanging out, like just talking to their homies that they've been going to shows with for the better part of 10, 15, 20 years, whatever, because they're just there for the love of the game. You know, it's awesome. I love it. I love that shit. And with how big hardcore has been getting recently with Turnstile, Knock Loose, and all mm -hmm. those super big like festival bands, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's 
it's getting more popular, obviously. Yeah. But the thing is, I, I saw I saw a tweet, and I I one hundred percent agreed with it. Mm. To the normal per to the normal person, mm. we're still like weirdos. Oh yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Oh, to, totally. to the layman, for sure. Yeah, because like you know, and we can we can like, get into this like later for like for real, for real. But like, I'm kind of pro gatekeep a little bit. Just really? because. Yeah, but just because of like the fact that. You get a lot of motherfuckers that are clout chasing, bro. Especially because of bands like, like, no disrespect to the band, but like, bands like Tsunami, bands like, kind of of that ilk, that have just gotten super big, like, bands like Knock Loose, like, those are like real ass hardcore bands. Cause, like, all those dudes, they still mosh, they still go to hardcore shows, they still play in hardcore bands, like, outside of their, you know, their massive, massive bands. But, you know, you get people that the music appeals to that don't know shit about anything. And they want to come in and be like the big dick in the locker room with a room for the lifers that have been there for the past decade plus. So like they'll pull up to a show with no etiquette, no Those courtesy. people that get punched. A thousand percent. Yeah. And like they, they come in with like no etiquette, no courtesy, and they just act a fool. And then they get smoked and they're like, what the fuck? I mean, that. it's like, brother, you, you, you asked for this. Like this is, this, is not, this is not anything that you didn't or you should have seen coming. You know what I mean? Because it's like, my whole thing is like, if it's it's for everybody, not for anybody. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to stick around and like become a student and like see how shit functions and works, dude, by all means, like welcome with open arms. But if like you want to come in because it's like cool and trendy, like dude, fuck you. Like it's it's that's not what it's about. Like it's not it's not supposed to be a, like a like a a cool thing to do, and then you forget about it in two years. There was uh, that free show we went to in Pomona. Remember that? It was uh, ninety seven minutes. Dollar Did Face Facts play that? No. Oh no! It was it was for like it was a birthday bash. Yeah. It was a birthday bash. Oh, Smoke played that. Was there? Yeah, Smoke played. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There was this guy, and he just kept like walking right into people when they were swinging and like pretending to dodge it and then one guy jumped off the stage from god awful and like yep. decked him in the face yep and then that was the first one and then the second one i even hopped in and that's how i broke my glasses yeah because i was like this guy's a fucking dick and I, i'm not very confrontational that is very common nowadays and that's why i'm like pro gatekeep you know because it's like you need to let the right people in the wrong people out yeah, facts because it's like you know obviously i am all for like young ass kids doing the damn thing. Cause like I was one of those kids too. Like dude, Affliction, shout out to Affliction. I think their drummer's like 15. Something wow. like that. Uh -huh. And like, you know, they played- um, Rapid Fast. Fast. Oh. Oh. oh, that's them? Amazing. Yeah. Young ass Lawyer. band. They're, they're like, their singer's like 16 or 17. Like they're covering Kickback. They mosh hard. They mosh hard as fuck, dude. Really so hard. Dude, their guitar player smoked me one time at a show in that hour. Because I was just like, I'm like, damn, these little ass kids are like moshing hard as fuck. And he kicked the fuck out of me to show over there. It was dope. I'm like, that's what it's about. See, and obviously, those youngins have been in for a while. Yeah. But those are the type of youngins that you want, you want to uh, let in. 100%. Uh, we went to see Kublai Khan at uh, the House, House of Blues. Of Blues. Yeah. Push Pit. I hated it. Shit show. Disappointed. Shit show. Shit show. There was this girl yeah. in front of us. Oh, man. She hit me in the face. And she just kept, ah! And then, oh man, I just kept pushing her and put, and then he started pushing her too. Oh, she was so annoying. Yeah. And then there was a girl sitting in the middle of the pit. Yep. Why? It happens all, all the time. time. Why? It happens all the time. Cause it's like, you have to realize that like those venues and those bands now, because they're so big, appeal to a totally different audience. Cause like, you know, like I came from the mall core scene. Like I was into like all the emo in the scene bands like, when I was a kid, before I found hardcore and shit. And it was just, it was like, there's no etiquette. Cause you gotta realize that like, even though they listen to like heavy music, they're normies, you know? Because like they have like the commercial, like the whole like, oh my music scares people fucking gimmick, you know? But it's just like, when it comes to etiquette and like show behavior, dude, that shit is so like lost on most people. And especially like at heavy shows, because like, you know, there's mosh etiquette, there's show etiquette, just things like that where it's just like... So what do you mean by show etiquette? So show etiquette is just kind of like whenever you see people moshing, uh -huh. you don't. there's nothing happening that is not supposed to be happening. Exactly. You don't need to be the whole fucking white knight who saves the day. That's like that, dude. I can't tell you how many shows I've been to where like people will just start moshing hard as fuck and some guy's like, I have to put a stop to this. It's like, why, bro? So the guy Jake out there, mm. it was me and him at Sound and Fury, and this mm. big guy got, he's on the edge of the pit for Bog. He got hit, and he starts, like, 
pushing this kid that hit him, and everyone swarms him. Yep. And I was like, what the fuck's your problem? Yep. You're you're on the edge of the pit. You're gonna get hit. He's like, oh, but he hit me. Gatekeep. Get out of here. Get out of no here. No way. Gone. <laughs> I'm saying like that type of shit. It's just like grown, grown man too, grown ass man. Of course, it's always grown ass men. It's always grown ass men who are there because some friend gave them their extra ticket and like who has been going to fucking metal shows where he pays seventeen bucks for a beer and spills it in the pit and like does the, the worst fucking, the worst shit ever. So and you're totally so against so the bottle flo- the bottle throwing. In the pit? Fuck that shit, bro. Yes, I fucking hate it, that. Man. Hate it. Dude. Every time I see a bottle, well, LDB, so many bottles, I grab them, throw them back. Oh yeah, for sure. Dude, there, there's been times where like that shit has happened, and I'll see who did it, and I'll grab a bottle and just fucking like launch it, football, throw it at them every time. Like, d- what are you doing? That's how people get hurt. That's how I fucked up my leg. Yeah. Exactly the <laughs> yeah. same so way I, I did it too. Dude, like, first of all, what is the best case scenario here? Like, like realistically, you what just is wasted your fifteen dollar beer? Yes. That, that's your best case scenario. Yes, and it's like, what? what is the, you're not adding to the show, you're not benefiting anybody, not even benefiting yourself, you look like an asshole. Like, what? what is the, what is the logic behind, watch this. Yeah, it's like there's two <laughs> friends that are there and they think it's hilarious and yeah. everyone else is pissed off. Yes, every motherfucker in there is like, dude, what are you doing? You know? And they probably don't even know. Some kid probably tore his ACL on that water puddle. You know, <laughs> on a, it, they're trying to circle pit. Some yeah. kid probably tore his ACL on that water puddle. Yeah, my dude. first show, dude. I'm I am very pro no drinks in the pit. Love it. I don't give a fuck what, if it's beer, if it's water, if it's fucking apple juice. I don't give a shit. No Get liquids. it out of the no liquids. No liquids on the dance floor. No liquids I had on the a water dance. bottle. I finished it. and I was like, I'm gonna throw it. You know what? Put it in my back pocket. Yes. Because I know it's better. not that hard. It's not. Yeah. First show he took me to. I uh, the first band I really got into was Zulu. My boys. And I was like, dude, those guys are sick as fuck. Shout out to Braxton Marcellus, the Inland Emperor. King Braxton. King Braxton, bro. Why? Dude, Lake oh, Lake guy? Elsinore legend. Really? Oh yeah. Dude. He he's so the Inland Empire, he's the emperor. <laughs> like God, he's the guy. The best drip ever. He's out of control, bro. Like every time I, every time he pulls a bit some shit, I'm just like, fuck, he did it again. Damn it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. He inspires me, bro. He's a, <laughs> dude, he's awesome. He's the best. Um, yeah, so me and Hoser bought a gang of merch, and I was like, I'll hold it, because I've never moshed before. I will hold it for you, and you mosh. And I told him, I was like, I'm going to go in. <laughs> I go in, I get one ring around, yep. and someone pushed me yep. right into him. Oh, in, fell, and I was like, oh, shit, I dropped all the shirts. Mm-hmm. I grabbed all of them, and I hobbled out. I went up to him, I was like, dude, I fucked my knee. That was at the, the observatory? Was it? No, uh, you know what? Yes, it was. Yeah. Santa Ana? It was, with yes. Show Me the Body. Yeah. Uh-huh. Show Me the Body. Dude. We missed them. Miss Scal. Dude, Jesus dude. peace. Dude, we missed everybody. He cracked his head open. We, I heard. <laughs> I was in that episode. Shit was gnarly, dude. Crazy. Dude, you know what's funny? This is a little bit of lore. That is the only venue I've ever gotten thrown out of. Really? The observatory, huh? I got thrown out of the observatory. I was, I was 15 years old. I got thrown out for stage diving. <laughs> Oh what? God. Because yeah. it was uh, this punk band played called The Weirdos. Uh-huh. It was like Love Canal, Shattered Faith, The Weirdos, and like one other band. And like I was crowd surfing. Like I had been going to punk shows for like ever at that point. So I was like, yeah, I'm on the stage now. So I crowd surf. There's a barricade. I get dropped into the the snake pit like all photographers are. And I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump back in the crowd. Uh-huh. So I jump on top of the stage and I go to dive and I just get tackled by some fucking six eight Samoan dude. Well, when we went, there was, we were right. Yeah, no, no barrier, no barrier yeah. nothing. What? Yeah, but like this, at like the time? at the time, yeah, this was probably 2013, I think. Or they just saw Jesus Peace was going and like, yeah, just take the barricade yeah. down. Get rid of barricades, by the way. No barricades. No barricades. Get rid of them. We don't need them. Nope. We don't need them. But but yeah, so like I got tackled and then they they threw me off the back steps. I like fucked up my wrist. <laughs> like I was 15 years old and some 35 year old giant six eight dude is throwing me off the top of a goddamn set of stairs. So so you fucked up your wrist, but I'm assuming that is not the worst injury you've obtained at a show, no, sir. No, sir. Um, the first time I ever got like seriously injured at a show was a show that I played in a band I used to be in in like high school. So my dumbass, again, I came from punk rock, which is a lot of like very crazy show antics. So my dumbass is, I, I, at the time I was playing bass in this band, we had like these PA speakers 
that would just kind of chill on like the side of the stage. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on top of one of those speakers. Hell yeah. <laughs> so I'm standing on top of the speakers and I'm playing, I'm rocking, I do my thing, and the speaker's like just doing this, uh-huh. and it just topples over I fall backwards and I land on the speaker with my bass and I break two of my ribs oh dude that is like one of the most painful injuries I've ever sustained ever like broke my ribs finished the show went to the hospital they're like yeah your ribs are broken because like you can't do anything when you have broken ribs what do you yeah exactly there's nothing you can do you're taking a shit you're in pain dude you're doing any, you're talking you're laughing you're breathing like existing <laughs> sucks dude like sitting down hurts F- forget laying down like you can't do anything so yeah that was that was that was a rough one um i broke my ankle seeing kublai Khan the chain reaction um broke your ankle broke my ankle uh the acacia strain was playing it was orthodox the acacia strain kublai Khan, dying wish i want to say uh-huh. Great show. Wow. It was oh yeah, great, great, great lineup. It was two nights in a row. The first night they played Slow Decay front to back. Second night was Wormwood front to back, which is like a foundational record for me. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to both shows, obviously. I'm seeing, because like Kublai Khan's one of my favorite bands. I have a Kublai Khan tattoo, like one of my favorite bands ever. And I went to the show. Night one, I'm moshing hard as hell, doing my damn thing, like living my life. And... Acacia Strain plays, they have a great set, it was awesome. Night two, Acacia Strain plays, same deal. So uh, Orthodox is a song called Body and Soul, that's like my favorite Orthodox song. I was like, Kublai Khan's playing in like 25 minutes, let me like go in the pit and warm up, because I'm gonna mosh Harvard Kublai Khan. Dude, first thing I do, I throw a tornado kick and I land it on my ankle wrong and just snap my shit in half. Dude, first time moshing that night. First guy through, just break my ankle. I fall on my ass, and I was like, damn, I sprained my ankle pretty bad. And I get up, and my, my ex-girlfriend at the time was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, like I just got to walk it off. I'll be chilling. And, like, I, I'm hanging on the wall, like, doing my thing, and I can't put weight on it. I can't stand on it. I'm like, damn, like, I fucked up my ankle pretty bad. I'm just like, what the fuck, man? And I'm, like, trying to stand on it, and I can't stand on it. And so... What, ha- what ends up happening is I go sit down, I take off my shoe, and my ankle's like a baseball. Just side of my, my ankle, I'm like, did I just break my fucking ankle right now? I'm like, nah, there's no way. So again, I'm stubborn as hell. I'm like, I'm not missing a case of strain. So I, I like lean on the wall, like the dividing wall at Chain Reaction, and like, like war is happening around me. Occasionally playing Wormwood front to back, again, is war. Like, I'm, I'm dodging, like, I'm hanging on the wall, like, dodging fists and feet and shit. And then after, after the show, I have my friend who came with me drive us home. I go to bed. The next morning, I call it at work. I go, to, I go to the hospital. And they're like, you broke the fuck out of your ankle. I'm like, God damn it. So I was on a boot for two months until that shit healed. Um, I broke my hand. Uh, I got into a fight, a chain reaction. Chain Reaction is, has a very long history with, with me and my friends. But, um, dude, so we all, we were all like big deathcore kids back in the day. So Chelsea Grin was playing Desolation of Eden wow. 10-year tour. Yeah, it was like it was like the anniversary tour of like one of my favorite records ever. So we all go. We're asshole moshing the whole night. Chelsea Grin's playing. My buddy gets into a scuffle. I run from across the venue, and I jump and just Superman punch a dude in the face. The minute my hand connects, I just feel fire go up my arm. Hit this dude, I'm just like, fuck! I'm like, I hit the dude, and I knew right away I broke my hand. Granite chin. Dude, <laughs> straight up. It's like that Mortal Kombat fatality where you can see the x-rays. Literally, <laughs> just through, through my entire head. shit, I'm just like, fuck! So I go to the bathroom, I, like, my hand's on fire, and then, like, next song is Chaney Stokes, so I, like, wrapped it in my windbreaker and just went back in the pit with my other hand and we kept moshing, <laughs> so... I love but. seeing dudes with like cast or like wraps on and they're still oh, yeah. in. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best shit ever, dude. I was like, yeah, they're so about it right now. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's and awesome. It, it, it hurts me or it scares me too when I see dudes with big old leg, leg braces. You know what I mean? It scares me because I'm a prior leg brace boy. I'm a two time torn ACL champ here. Dude, so, legend. Same ACL. <laughs> Same ACL. Same ACL. Same knee, yeah, my right knee. And so whenever I see that in the pit, I. I'm always kind of like, I'm watching out for him, you know? It's gnarly. I'm always hoping, I, I, I hope you make it out of this yeah. completely fine. Dude, my homie Zach just had ACL surgery. He drove up to the bay 
to go to come see Room with Mind Force has the full leg brace. Dude, hit, the way that he gets around it is he like locks it into place <laughs> and then moshes. Dude, oh, I know dude. exactly what you're talking about. I'm doing it. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Dude. So like he has like the full the full gimmick. So like he'll lock that shit into place and then just mosh hard as hell. And that's how you know he's real as fuck. Yeah, that's dude. How you know he's about it. Absolutely. You know? I love that. He drove six hours to come see us. Like he, was Corpse Killer there? Did I see him there? Corpse Killer on Twitter. That's Corpse Pile. Corpse. Corpse Pile. Corpse Pile. Corpse Pile. Jordan. Thinks. Oh yeah. Jordan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan yeah, was there. I swore I saw him there. Saw Jordan, his wife, Zach, the homie Devin. Yeah, dude. A lot of your homies from from uh, SoCal pulled up pulled for up you guys. That's so, awesome. That was dude. awesome, dude. How was it playing with Mind Force? <laughs> Crazy, dude. So, Mind Force was a band that I got into when they put out Sweet Swords Chop and Lords. And I was That's like, this EP best. is incredible. The like, fucking best. Because they're basically just like if like Metallica and the Crow Mags had like crazy ass mosh parts. So I got into Mind Force, saw them a bunch, I'm like, this is the best band ever. And they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, you know, Place Down in Fury, they had the legendary shows in New York, like everything. And then my homies in Ruin were like, we should do a weekend. Like, like let's like let's go on a weekend run. I'm like, yeah, absolutely, because like I have experience like booking shows, like booking tours and stuff. So I was like, yeah, like, like let's let's do it. So we reach out to Danny from uh, RNRG up in the Bay, who like books all like the shows out there, and we're like, hey man, like we're coming through on this day. Um, we're gonna do Bay Area, Sacramento, and Baker still is our plan. Uh, if there's anything going on. We'd love to like jump on some shit or like do something. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, we'll figure it out. No problem. I'll let me get back to you." We're like, dope, cool, thanks. He hits us back like a month later, and he's like, "Yo, you guys are locked in at a skate shop in Oakland um, with X band, X band, X band." We're like, "Dude, thank you so much. Fuck yeah, we get to play in the Bay. Awesome." So uh, we we're like, "Cool, getting ready for the show. We're planning the other days. So other shows get booked. We're like, cool. Like, well, this weekend's happening. Fuck yeah, like we're we're excited." Um, like ordering merch and shit and then Danny hits us back and he's like hey dude um, so I'm moving the show to a different venue in San Jose we're like yeah no problem man whatever you, like, whatever you want to do no no issue at all and he was like you guys can only do the, ni- the 19th I'm like yeah we have Sacramento on the 20th we're like, he's like okay okay no problem um, he's, like, he's like let me figure out some shit and I'll get back to you I'm like cool no problem he hits us back and he's like yo um I'm moving the show to this venue in in San Jose called Club Rodeo Rio. It's a way bigger venue, but now Mind Force and Manos de Fierros are playing. So we're like, what? We're like, what do you mean Mind Force is playing? He's like, yeah, Mind Force is coming through with No Way Out. They're doing like 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 a like a Bay Area weekend. Um, they're playing the show now. And we're like, are we still on the show? He's like, yeah. We're like, so it's us and Mind Force. He's like, yeah. We're like. Oh shit! I would have so, been screaming, dude. So you know it's funny when we got this DM. Me and Noah were playing Fortnite, and we're playing, and Noah goes quiet for a second. He goes, "Wait, what? That doesn't make any. Hold on a minute. What? That's not my for what? That can't like, be right." Yeah, and I'm like, "No, what are you talking about?" He goes, "Check the ruin chat." And I open the, my phone to the Instagram chat, and I read down, and like my heart's like fucking pounding. I'm like, "Are you fucking serious?" Because it's, it's it's us and our boys in Provoke that are that are going on this tour, and so I take a screenshot of the chat and I send it to um, like the text chat, and I'm like, "Yo, if this is for real, we're playing with Mind Force." And Andrew is like, "What the fuck?" Chris is like, "Holy shit!" The next day, Danny sends the flyer, so it's Provoke us, No Way Out, Mind Stay Fieros, and Mind Force. And we're on the flyer. We're like, what in the fuck? So we send a flyer out. We're like, dude, what the fuck? And so like we're geeked in the chat. And so we end up, we end up posting the show. All my homies are like, what the fuck? I'm like, dude, I know. So um, all of the the SoCal homies buy tickets like that day. Like, yeah, we're going out to that show for sure. So we get to the venue. The venue's a thousand cap. This is the second show they've ever had. The first show being Tsunami and Bulldoze in San Jose. So we're like, oh my God. So we get to the venue hella early. Wait, that was a, this is the second the show? The second show at that venue ever. And the first show was Bulldoze and, and Tsunami? Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. So we're like, holy shit. 
So we get there. Dude, the venue's massive. It's like, it's a weird layout because like the stage is here and then the venue's like this way. So like there's a bunch of space because it's like it's like a banda club. So like a bunch of like banda bands play there. It's not it's not like a it's not like a like a, like a venue venue. And so they move all the couches out, whatever. And about a week before this, Danny was like, "Yeah, all the pre-sales sold out," which is like 800 tickets. We're like, "What the fuck?" So like we're freaking out. And so we end up uh, setting up the show. And then like as soon as doors open, like 200 people show up, which is already like one of the biggest I've ever played. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. And then, you know, the band's going out after doors and people keep showing up. Like, Hands of God pulls up, Out of Pocket pulls up. Like, it's like, like all the Bay Area heads that were like in the area pull up. It was crazy. Like, you know, um, all, like, like all those fools pull up. And then like, like uh, these streets, Port Suffer pulls up. Like, like all like, the Bay Area bands are like at the show. We're like, this is fucking crazy. Provoke plays to like 450, 500 people. They play the best set they've ever played. They sounded unbelievable. Right after they play, like people keep coming, coming, coming. And then we get on stage and there's like six or 700 people there. We're freaking out. We're like, what the fuck? We play our set to the biggest crowd I've ever played to. Ever, and it was awesome. Like people were fucking with us. Were, were you drinking at the time? Were you? Just... I was terrified, yeah, bro. Terrified. I'm drinking too. What have you wonders? Yeah, maybe maybe that would have. Uh, what have you wonders? Edge off a little bit. <laughs> should have had a beer because I was like, I want to have a beer before we play, and I was like, no, nah, I can't. No, should I? No, nah, I can't. No, should I? Nah, and like like I just kept going back and forth. Ended up not. Um, but we played our set. It was awesome. It was very dope. Manos played. Had a crazy set. No way out played. Crazy set. Dude, Mind Force played. There was like eight or 900 people when Mind Force played. Like, they were setting up, and I'm just like, like, it wasn't hitting me yet. And then Jay walks out on stage, and he's like, yo, what's up? We're fucking Mind Force. Yeah, dude, I love and then you. It's me. I'm like, Mind Force is about to play a show that I just played. That was a perfect impression, by the way. It's oh, dude, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> I love Mind Force. But yeah, he's like, San Jose, what the fuck is up? Like, best dude ever. Like, you have his backpack on this time? Yeah, hell yeah, he had his backpack on, bro. Well, what, and, was, what was going on with that? You know, dude, it's a big backpack. You know what, thing. since then, <laughs> yeah. since the backpack, I got pretty heavy into D9. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that was a D9 kind of like yeah. tribute. Absolutely. Right Absolutely. Shout out those guys. Fire. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's real old school shit. So that's, shout out to D9. Yeah, because when he was at LDB, he was like, you guys got to like go to your roots. You guys got to find the bands that your bands like. like Learn your history. Yeah. And I'm a big I'm a big point of that, too. Like, I mean, he gave us a pod lore back at LDB, and I was like, wow. <laughs> or hard lore. Hard lore, not pod lore. Sorry. Hard lore. Hard lore. Yeah. But, dude, yeah. Like, so apparently, like, Jay got, like, a bunch of his stuff stolen oh. at, like, a show he played. Oh. So he's, like, not bring the stone. He was, like, on tape to me. So he walks out in the backpack. And, like, everyone's like, dude, what the fuck is Jay doing? But there was a tactical reason. It's because he's, like, he's protecting his shit. I'm going to get robbed again. Oh, yeah. really? That's yeah. fucked up, dude. Oh, That's damn, so fucked okay. up, man. Because, like, cause, like, I guess, like, they played somewhere. Like, somebody, like, snagged his bag and like with his, like, laptop and shit, which is fucked up. But, like... So he had like a tactical reason for that backpack, but it just happened to look fly as hell. So if you're a thief, you're a fucking scumbag. A thief, bro. What happened? What happened this morning? Dog, bro. So I got home at like two thirty this morning, hella late. I had to get up at six for work. I like I left my guitar and my amp in my car, just because I'm like I'm coming back in the morning. Like it'll still be there in a few bottom. hours. A few hours. I go, I'm gone for three, three and a half hours. I come back, my passengers, my, my driver's side door and my back door are like slightly ajar. I was like, hmm, that's kind of weird. And I look, my guitar's gone, my amp's gone. And I'm like, fuck. And I was, I was parked in my apartment complex, par- like carport. So he had to walk through my front gate, through my complex, to the back where the cars were, and then back out through the front gate. No cameras. Cameras. Yeah, it could be a cameras. You got his bitch ass? <sighs> not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Keyword, not yet. No, but did you see him on camera? Yeah, we have footage of the guy. Thank God. So, yeah. Because, like, luckily, like, my shit's, like, pretty pretty modified. Like, my, my gear, like, it's pretty, pretty personalized. So, like... You'll know it. I'll know it when I see it, for sure. Because, like, the amp that I use is, like, kind of a boutique amp where, like, not a lot of people have them. I think there's, there's, like, there's like less than 200 made. 
like mine's like covered in stickers and I have like a little like keychain on it and shit. And like my guitar has been modified. It doesn't have stock parts on it. So like like if it pops up, I'll know it. So, and like, you know, I have a homie that, a homie that works at Guitar Center. Send out send like, like a mass email to everybody in the area. Like, hey, this is stolen gear. I have friends that work in pawn shops. I have like half of my homies in SoCal like in the music scene, all scrubbing like offer up, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all like looking for the gear. So I'm very fortunate to have as many homies as I do. What's the situation looking like when you guys say when you guys find it? What what's what what are you doing? What's the game plan? Dude, just honestly at this point, man, I just gonna wanna get my shit back. Like luckily I'm not like fucked out of gear. Cause, like I have other gear that I can use, but it's just like I want like shit, ten dudes bro. deeper. Hundred percent. Like like if if my shit is found I have like five bands that are like just drop a pin brother we'll be there so that's what that's what hardcore is all about that's unity <laughs> that's, that's, that's the hardcore. unity right there a hundred percent it's beautiful yeah cause like you know like obviously like the IE fools are down to pull up all like like my OC homies are down to pull up they're just like brother if you find it just send us the address we'll be there cause dude what it realistically what other music scene has something like that there isn't one. There isn't there one. There isn't one. Like, the code of conduct and, like, the, the proverbial code of honor that's in hardcore, it's, it's the best. Like, there's an ethics to it. Like, 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 the ethics in hardcore are, in my opinion, like, almost second to none. Because, like, everybody's looking after everybody else because everybody's here for the same reason, you know? And because, like, most of the time, these guys that are playing shows, these guys that are, like, going to shows... You see them all the time. You see their bands all the time. And like, if you develop like a like a relationship with these people, even if it's you know, like like if it's like a, a peripheral relationship, like you don't want, you don't want bad shit to happen to people. Yeah. yeah. Just like like what like what kind of fucking psychopath is like? I hope you get your shit stolen, bro. I'm glad that happened to you. Uh, you know. Yeah. Hater shit. Hater shit, bro. So it's like the fact that there's obviously there's haters in hardcore, but like kind of a le- less like toxic haters. Kind of just like more of a like. Yeah, that band kind of sucks, haters, but, like, that's, like, whatever. But, like, in it's terms subjective. of, like... Art's, yeah. Art is subjective. Of course it is. 100% it's subjective. And it's, like... The, but the fact that, like, you have people that are just, like, yo. Like, even if we don't know each other that well, I will ride for you off principle. Got your back. That shit's dope. That yeah. shit is mad dope. Like, dude, motherfuckers that I've never spoken to in my life, like, followed me, screenshotted my shit, shit, and was like, I hope you get your shit back, bro. Like this sucks. Hope you get your stuff back. That, it, that type, like that type of support, feels like that's that peripheral oh, like, cool. relationship like, you're talking. Yeah, about. bro. They've seen you, they know you're dope, and a hundred percent support. Dude, like even if I don't get my shit back, I'm like the like the fact that I have this many people that are like down for me is awesome. Like that is like. Even if I don't get it back, it's so cool to know that I, I got I got like homies. It's like all those small gestures, yeah. endless meaning. Endless meaning, cause like, cause like I know that in any situation, regardless of what happens, like I would do the same for them, just because because even if it's a peripheral relationship, like I said, there's like there's like like that ethics that that like that ebb and flow of conduct and like just listen, bro. Like I'm not gonna wish ill on anybody. That's like that's like somebody that I've seen before that I know is like a good dude. Cause like like I said, you're one to two people away from any person in hardcore, in any scene, you know. Cause like you'd be surprised how small the hardcore scene is. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, we know how small it is. Hey man, we, we know how small we drove, it is. We drove what was it, seventeen hours? Which is insane. Where? To to Kentucky. Thirty two, bro. Oh, you it's, know what? Hey, it's the CT, bro. Yeah, it's the CT. <laughs> Brother, I thought when when you guys we we met at LDB, when you guys told me that you drove from Upland, I thought you were like doing a bit. <laughs> like so literally, it was a fucking bit. Such That's a small happened. world. Yeah. That we three ended up meeting up in the yeah, same so this state is, this across is, the country. This is what yes. happened. We were talking. We were like, dude, we might be the only people from California there, or one of the few. Uh, yeah, you you explained it to us. I'll, we're retarded. Okay? We're <laughs> stupid. It's real. We're, we're hey, stupid. Brother, me too. <laughs> me too. So we we we're like one of the first people there on day one, and I don't know his name. The singer from Torena. Oh, walking, Julian. He's walking yeah. across the street. And I go Torena. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> the whole was that like so he funny. Was like, and I was like, bro, I had to. <laughs> I had to. I'm sure. I'm sure Julian was like, what the fuck? Yeah, he, yeah, he literally went. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he just had a little smile. He went, 
Yeah, I just kept Jul- walking. Julian's dope. Yeah, yeah shout I, out to Trina Shout out to Stateside. I had to. Um, yeah, had dude. To. That's that's so fucking the rain. Yeah, dude, I'm, yeah. I'm doing that to Julian next time I see him, bro. Dude, and then that's I'm so I'm funny. wearing the Ruin shirt day one, and some guy just walks by me. He's like, "Oh, CHC, bro." I was like, "Fuck yeah, bro." Hell yeah, and I was like, "Wow, like I just recognized what that." The fuck, that's crazy. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, "Sick, bro." And then, uh, fuck, who was it before? When when we run into you? It was before Big Boy. I think you dove into him, right? What happened when, when we ran into? That was during Stateside. I did dive into you. That was during Stateside, I think, because I was I was like the first person to Stateside. No, for sure. I remember that we talked before that. Was it before? Was it before? Oh, it was before Stateside. Yeah, that's right. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember you're like, hey, bro. And you're like, sick shirt, dude. I play in the band. I was like, yo. Because it's crazy because, like, I texted the Ruin chat. I'm like, yo, bro, there's a fucking Ruin shirt in Kentucky. This is crazy. And then Chris was like, that might be my homie. And I was like, oh, word. And then, like, I pulled up and I was like, yo, what's up, dog? And then, like, I was like, yeah, I play in that band. You're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, and we tried to chopping it up. It was dope. But, like, when you told me that you drove from Upland, I was like, terrible. Nah, like, like you drove to the airport and then you flew? Like, what do you mean you drove? They're like, no, like, you drove from California. I was like, what in the fuck? Like, yeah. I could not, not be wrong. caught. I could not be caught. So, yeah, it was a CTE that it gets to me a little <laughs> bit. 17 hours, definitely wrong. Yeah. It was definitely wrong. Dude, how fucking weird are Kentucky people? You know what, dude? They were so nice to us. The, really? Uh, they the were the Southern nicest hospitality, people. hospitality, extremely... What, what is that? Midwest? Midwest. Yeah, yeah. that mid, Midwest hospitality, dude. Dude, you know what's crazy? It's, it's real. The only place I've experienced those people is at Waffle House. Waffle House I employees, Waffle House. the nicest people on the planet. Everywhere else, fucking assholes. Really? I experienced assholes. the exact opposite. Yeah, dude, we had a great experience dude, there. Dude, we, we, like I said, we're stupid. We made a wrong turn. Right when we got to Kentucky and went up this cul-de-sac, and there was like five people walking. Everyone said, "Oh, how you guys doing?" And I was yeah. like, "Just some random ass dudes, dirty as hell in the car." You're just, "Hi, how you guys doing?" Texas was, was like that for us. Te- like, like when I went to Texas for the first time, it was very much just like people on the street, like, "Yo, like, how how are you doing? How is your day going?" I'm like, yeah. who the fuck is like? Yeah, and, and that California shit is not about it. It's- California shit's <laughs> brother toxic. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Oh dude. my god. And I remember I went to Oklahoma for um, for a, my brother's graduation. Yeah. And it was night and day. The people there compared to the people in Cali- California. California is so fucked nice. up, bro. It is so fucked up. I think it's just because it's such a big state, such a big melting pot of different people. And plus, like, SoCal is so doggy dog here, bro. Like, it's yeah. like, don't trust anybody. Case in point, I got, I got my shit broken into in my house, yeah. in my apartment complex. It's like, don't trust anybody. Like, nobody in California is looking out for you. you and I mean? Hollywood, the most scumbaggish percent fucking place ever. Well like, said. You know? Well said. It's, it's terrible. It's awful. But, it like, because, like, dude, even, like, when we went to, like, like Utah, uh-huh. Utah kind of gave us some weird looks because like, we were very much, like, from California. That's Mormonville, though. Utah. Mormonville, dude. That's a OG, that's a OG pod. <laughs> OG pod topic. Yeah. Utah is gnarly, dude. Yeah. But like, but but like, but like the hardcore scene out there, oh, dude. Yeah. We played Salt Lake with. Shout out to Service Rapper. Shout out to Zodiac Killer. Shout out to Mummy. That band is fucking tight. Um, dude, we played with them, and it was like instantly like, yo, you guys came from out of state. What's up, bro? Like, like we're your homies now. Like, no matter what. And it was awesome. And I, because, like, there's nothing to do in Salt Lake, like, Salt Lake kind of sucks. And there's, like, nothing to do out there. Because, that's, like, like the, the city there, right? Everything closes at 9. They don't sell alcohol on Sundays. Same thing with Kentucky, dude. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. They, like, you, like, there's nothing except for Waffle House. Nothing is open past 9 p.m. So, like, like, like we, got, we get out the venue. There's nothing open. So, you know, in Salt Lake, it was very, like, weird. I feel like we get us weird looks because we were from California. But, like... The show out there, because of nothing to do out there, they all pull up and are just like, thank you for coming from out of state to come play our city. It was awesome. They are, they're appreciative. It, it, yeah, it's a, big, oh, yeah. it's a big deal though. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Like, And I've noticed is like, you know, post, post, I guess like post lockdown, touring bands get so much more love than they did because people lost their favorite yeah. thing for almost two years. So like, I feel like we're still feeling the residual effects of just like, being appreciative when like bands are spending their time and their money to like actually take the time to come to yeah, that's why X city. Every time I go to a show, which is not often, mm-hmm. but I try to go as much as I can. Yeah. I'll go from start to finish. Yeah. Especially like these local shows. 
Especially local shows. Like well, local, scene, like, that local scene is better than it's ever been. I love it. Dude, like IE Hardcore has been has been has gotten shit and gotten shit on for so fucking long. But Why? Honestly, like all due respect, motherfuckers from the IE just they don't know how to behave at shows sometimes. Okay. You know? And like notoriously can't keep a venue open. Like you know, yeah, they literally shut us down. I, yeah. I meant, Facts. dude, the MPS Facts. shut down, Facts. baseline shut down. Not my fault. You know, MPS partially my fault. That was a great venue. Great venue, but like, yeah, like MPS got shut down. Like, like all the like the venues in the IE, they can't stay open because people don't know how to behave out here. You know, respectfully. But now I think that the caliber of bands that are coming out and the caliber of just people in general that are like. Driving to OC, driving to the Valley, driving to LA, starting sick fucking bands yeah. from the IE. Like it's 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 cool that it's finally kind of coming back around to people trying to put respect on the IE again. Because like, dude, like when we played shows, it's like if you wanted to have a good show guaranteed, you play the IE. Because it's gonna be batched every single time. Because like you know, back in the day, like like this was before my time, but like. The Showcase Theater in Corona was, like, the place that bands played. Where, like, bands would route to L.A. or, like, SoCal, and they played Corona. They didn't play Orange County, they didn't play L.A., they didn't play anywhere. They played Corona. That was where you played. And the shows were always crazy. And then when, when the Showcase shut down, a lot of that residual shockwave was, like, oh, now C has to get a venue. Now L.A. has to get a venue. Now, like, whatever has to get a venue, you know. And then now that... IE Hardcore is kind of coming back into being what it is now. It's cool that people are trying to be like, oh yeah, like there's good shows in the IE. Yeah. You know? And because it's like, you know, I mean, shit. A lot of the bands coming out are like, it's like some of the dopest shit ever. Like, Big Ass Truck. Bro, that guy right behind Shout you. Shout out to Abel, bro. That guy right behind you. Loves them, dude. Fucking loves them. Shout out to Big Ass Truck, bro. Shout out to Big Ass Truck. Shout out to Abel. Shout out to Ashiki. Like Ashiki's fire. Awesome. They just got on a big show. Uh, I think they just announced it today. I will be there. Dude, you know what's fucked up? Big Ass Truck is playing that same day. And I was talking to Abel about this. Abel is playing with Big Ass Truck in Pomona. Racing to Chain. Playing with Ashiki. And then racing back to Haven to play with North Buena. With who, I'm sorry? Right, the well, that's her last show, oh, right? Last show ever. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And that's Big Ass Truck's first show. First show. That's going to be gas. That's awesome. Dude, straight up, like... That's on the 27th, eight, right? 18th. 18th. Yeah, Abel is a psycho. Fuck. So, he's, 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 he's the best dude ever. He's one of the nicest people on the planet, and he's a psychopath. Like, Wait, do I know him? He sings the Big Ass Truck, plays guitar on Shiki. Yeah. So, let me ask you, who's the big video game head in, OC, in Ruin OC? Ooh... Probably Chris Noodles. New, uh, so our bassist is Chris. He uh, he does like he works at like at like one of those like like gaming places where people like will show up and like play esports and he like Chris oh, Root, sick. not Chris Root, Chris Noodles. Okay. There's two Chris Chris's in the band. He's a bass player. He yeah. he he runs like a like competitive gaming place and like hosts tournaments and things like that. So he's like a gamer gamer. But like like all of us all of us will game like Benny and Chris and Noah will play Fortnite pretty heavily. And then, like, you know, when I have my time, I like the game. I like, I like to do my thing. Whose idea was the Halo T? That, I th- I want to say, was Chris Noodles. Dude, that was that Chris. was big. Brother, dude. Dude, dude we're, we're like, we just got into Mexico. I'm dead sleep. And he wakes me and he's like, hey, bro, you got to see this. And I, and I wake up, I go, holy fuck. Yeah. I was like, this is fire. Instant, instant bot. Dude, you know. It was you know, so hard. The biggest bummer about the Mind for show, we supposed to have a video wall behind us when we played. <sighs> Chris Root made a, a, a video wall for us. It was, the, it was the Halo 3 trailer with the logo over it in black and white. So it was the it was the trailer for Halo Three playing behind us while we played, and then like like footage of like like MLG Halo should have like quick scopes and like like to like that. So it was like it was the trailer intercut with Halo gameplay, oh with the with the logo over it. That was with your video wall, and the video wall didn't work for the show. I'm like fuck, but we have it next time. We we have it. If we ever play with the video wall again, that's gonna be behind us. Dude, yeah, that shirt was like fuck, dude. That yeah, he's a PlayStation guy. So uh, that's why I, I'll power to you. I, I am too. I am too. I'm both. Definitely a PlayStation guy. But I played Halo growing up. Same. I, see, my and first console hard. was original Xbox. 
Then it was a 360. So like I was I was in the trenches. I was playing Halo for sure. Yeah, yeah. I had an OG Xbox 360. Yep. I went to PS4. Yep. And I got hacked and I said never again. They weren't getting my shit back. No so way. Said, never again. And Bastards. I'm on Xbox. Yeah. Bastards. But now I got a PC, so it don't really matter. I think our trajectory is the same minus the hacking because like I got a original Xbox 360, PS4, PS5, PC. Because like I had a PC like way back when that I was playing like Need for Speed, like Medal of Honor and shit. So like. Way back. Way back, yeah. I, I started off with Nintendo Game Boy, GameCube, then after that I went and on my so I went on my Sony trajectory. PS2, PS3, and 4. I've Bro, I've yet Sony. to get the five. It's dope. You know, it's hopefully dope. someday. It's time. <laughs> anybody wants to hit me up with a five. <laughs> I'll Dude, totally take it. Listen, the only game I've ever paid for twice is Ghost of Tsushima. Oh. Because I played it on the PS4. I was like, I'm in love with this game, it's my favorite game now. And then the PS5 update hit with like the like the updated graphics and shit, and I was like, I'm yeah. buying this game again. And now bought it again. They just dropped it on PC. Yes, they did. And it's supposed to be even better. If you have it on, if you have not played it, play it. It's the best game you will ever play. And I haven't played it. Worth the buy. Oh, God, it definitely. Yeah. Is yeah. But like, see, I think if I'm gonna dive deep on a new game, I think it's got to be on the new console. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like this just that's yeah. just how it's got to be. Then you're never gonna get it. You know? You're maybe maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe one day, but like, <laughs> Don't Resident, me, I'm not buying it for Resident Evil. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll buy all those every single oh, time. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, dude, it's funny because uh, I was talking about this with my homie. Like, Resi three, Resi two and three is like some of the worst gameplay in gaming period. But like. The story is so memorable. You can and nostalgia. Like, you, you almost like don't care how bad it is. But then like you know, Resi four hit, and you're just like, this is. Revolutionary. We're 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 good. We're I good. never played it. He played it. I watched I watched playthrough with Jev. Face Jev. Yeah. Funniest shit ever. Mm -hmm. I love it. That yeah. game was awesome. Resi Four was like a sea change, for like gamers worldwide. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, Resi Four was the shit. But then like, all of Ruin is like really into like Metal Gear. So like, dude, so our 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 like live intro is we play the Snake Eater song. Like the Snake Eater theme. So, like, dude, the, the the horns will hit, and the, what a thrill. And then everyone's like, yeah! <laughs> like, it was dope. Dude, when we played that in, in uh, the Bay, there was, like, people moshing to the Snake Eater. Oh yeah, it dude. It was sick. It was dope. I gotta, now I got to figure out what that is. I got to check it out. Oh, you don't know Snake Eater? Nope. Brother, listen, the most convoluted story of all time. Games are fucking badass. Dude, the Snake Eater theme is, like, one of my favorite, like, songs. Like, after we did the run, I was used to hearing it the whole time, and I was like, what if I just let this rip, like, at work? So, like, I'll be at work, like, listen to just, like, fucking, what a thrill, just, like, in my headphones. So sick. So sick. Dude, at work yesterday, was it yesterday, yeah, I got off work early, and uh, he, my friend went to Sick New World with his brother, and you were there, too. I right? was there. Mm -hmm. And... He's, he says he likes hardcore, and mm -hmm. I've been, like, bouncing off of my thinks he knows. And he's pretty entry-level, which I don't mind. Mm -hmm. But I was like, bro, just, like, you got to listen to these bands. You got to listen to this band, this mm -hmm. band, your guys' band. He was like, yeah, check him out. And then finally, I caught him outside of work. And I was like, hey, bro, you care to listen? I put on Balmora. And he was like, bro, can you turn this up any higher? I was like, I wish. And then I was like, I'm going to play Ruin. Because I told him already. Mm -hmm. and I was like, he's coming on the pod. Thank you. I was like, you got to listen. Mm -hmm. And I played him. He's like, wait, this is Ruin? He's like, I got to tell my brother. No and way. And as soon as he said that, I was like, he's hooked. That's the fucking sick. The second he sick. said, I have to tell my brother, I was like, fuck yeah. Dude, that is so dope. But me and him were doing side to sides at the parking lot. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, dude. Dude, real shit. So Balmora played FTC Fire. this past year. Uh -huh. Dude, half of the bands playing and like everybody working the show was like in the pit. They let the whole piano intro roll. There was like people going side to side for the pianos. It was one of the I coolest never, things I've ever I never ever heard about seen. them before. You, you yeah, that was, that was my first introduction we to Balmora as well. We were in the back right corner. Oh, you guys were there? Yeah. Oh, dude. The, the, the fact that there was like people watching the sample, and then when that shit hits, dude, it was funny because my, my homie Mateo, like we, we got up to the, to, the, to the upstairs room, and he was like, I got to lock in, bro. It's time to, time to ride into battle. And I was like, Straight up, because like like we like we used to make jokes of just like us sending pictures of like knights and like chain mail on horses. Like, I love it. Me listening to Balmora right now, <laughs> like that's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. But dude, Balmora is <sighs> they're so good, unbelievable. They've dude, been on repeat so much mm, this. They're whole. so sick. Yeah. One of my favorite things, dude, is when they got an instrumental, right? 
just an intro, mm -hmm. the basic instrumental, people were just moshing. For example, Sanction, when they were doing that yes, jazz. Yes, dude, that was, was so, so beautiful. Dude, the pre-show was fucked up. Cause like that, that LEB pre-show, fucked up. Like, same thing, people mosh into the sample. Cause like they that was their first show in like a couple years, I think. And like Mateo was like, that's his band, bro. Sanction. Sanction. Oh. And so, like, you know, I saw Sanction a bunch of times back when they played, and I I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to mosh, bro. Like, you know, it's just kind of gnarly. They played Paralysis, and I was like, I, I got to go in there, bro. I got to go in there. Like, like Paralysis, Radio Lacerations, who stayed it upon a figure. Like, I was, like, jumping off the stage, doing, like, corkscrew hammer fists and shit, like... Had to act a fool for, for Sanction. Like, dude, Sanction, when they played FTC a couple years ago, was, like, one of the scariest things I've ever seen. The rock block, it was, like, it was, like, Gear of the Knife, Wrist Meat Razor, Sanction, back to back to back. It's fucked. And it was, it was, it was so, so sick. I'm waiting for that wild TK comeback as well, man. They just announced they're back. They're, they're playing uh, New England Metal and Hardcore Fest. So, oh, that's a big one. Yeah. It's a really big yeah. one. Yeah, they're playing. They're back. So, because I listened to that Harlow episode with Maddie, and Maddie was like, I've been ready, bro. I'm waiting for them. Yeah, dude, so, that's crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah. She, she's a gangster. She's so sick. I actually got to play with the Year of the Knife at midnight hour. Um, shit, maybe a year and a half ago now, two years ago. And that No, that no Love Lost album, oh it's one of my God. favorite albums of 2023. It is unbelievable how good it is front to back front to back it's crazy like dude what is it atlas the crazy because like when ldb last year like the year what the one before this one was my first time going to ldb they did a secret set where they just played the, the three song through just front to back and it was like it was like simulacra played and then brandon came on stage and was like, yo, wouldn't it be a shame if you're the Night of the Secret set right now? And it was like, what? So they played the three song and it was like, dude, you would have thought Hatebreed was playing. It was fucked. And then right after that, they, they flew to California to track with Taylor Young to do, the, to do the new record. Oh yeah, oh that's right, he did do all that. Yeah, and so um, my old band, shout out to Xavier from SOS, he hit us up and he was like, yo, like, what are you guys doing? This was on Friday. He was like, are you guys busy Monday? And we're like, no, what's up? He's like, he's like, yo, I got momentum upon stone here, the knife at minute hour. Do you guys want to play? We're like, yes, absolutely. What the fuck do you mean? Like, absolutely. So they played the smaller room in an hour with momentum and upon stone. It was, it was insane. Like that, like that could have sold out the big room, I think. But like it sold out in like 10 minutes and we ended up playing. It was, it was crazy. It was awesome. Yeah. And they were like the coolest to us. They were so nice to us. Like they were awesome. Very, very cool band. 2023 was an insane year for, for hardcore. Dude, it was unbelievable. Like, every, like, it was like every band ever dropped a record. Every band ever went on tour at the same time. Every band ever was playing everywhere. So, like, I got out of hardcore at the right time? 100%. Absolutely. Dude, it's it's never been in a better place, I think. Dude, you you sent the 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 Spotify playlist to the to the page? Oh, yeah. I had it on repeat for days. Fuck yeah. Dude, just no skips. I was yeah. telling him, oh, no skips. Dude, that, that playlist was, I helped, uh, some friends of mine and some bands helped me curate that playlist. Like, uh, Lumpy from King Nine helped me curate that playlist. Bo from Harm's Way, Colin from Twitching Tongues, Tony from So Gache. you know all that? Not, well, I don't know, I don't know Lumpy personally, but I hit him up and I was like, yo, dog, I'm moving oh, the playlist. Shit. Like, and he's like, yeah, send me a bunch. Like, he sent me like, 20 Madball songs and I was like slow down brother like I gotta pick like I gotta pick two so um, but like me and Colin Colin follows me I like I, again my favorite band Twitching Tongues I've been in them trenches for Price. ever been to so many shows dude I've do you go I to Twitch Fits? Not, fuck yeah I went to Twitch Fits lucky dude I have not missed a Twitching Tongues show in California since 2016 fuck just like like I flew to Gilman to go see them because, like, dude, the, the weekend that they came back was the weekend of my birthday, uh -huh. the weekend of my 25th birthday. So I went and I saw them at 1720 and I saw them at Gilman. Just flew up there for the night, flew back the next morning. Yo, that's a birthday gift and a half, oh right? Oh my God, dude, because it was like Twitching Tongues Harm's Way, Twitching Tongues Harm's Way at Gilman. Like, what more could you want? 
When is your birthday? November 8th. November 8th. So what does that make you exactly? Scorpio. Scorpio. Do you believe in all that kind of stuff? Not really. Me neither. Like, I'm like, about it. It's like, it's, it's like, it's, it's cool to be like, yeah, I'm Scorpio. Is that why you got the scorpion <laughs> on your arm? Badass. Yeah. yeah. What's, like, what's a Capricorn? What the fuck is that? What does that look like? Capricorn. Yeah. Isn't that uh, that little guy on the horse shooting that arrow or whatever? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, this, this motherfucker. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah see, I don't even know. Yeah, dude. That is pretty badass. See, I don't base my opinions off, off signs. I base my opinions on how I feel when I talk to you. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. For oh, everybody. Man. Isn't this bro like a Sagittarius? Isn't that what that gimmick is? You know what? <laughs> We're looking this up right now. I'm yeah, I'm tripping out here. I'm just like, what in the fuck? But, but yeah, nah. Like Capricorn is a goat. Oh, it's a goat. It's a goat. No way. I can't put that on either. Hey, that'd be pretty sick. It'd be, talented, it'd be kind of tight. Dude, his brother uh, did that that new logo for us. I thought that was so sick. Dude, that shit looks dope. Shit looks tight as hell. His brother's an up and coming tattoo artist out there in Germany. Plug that. Plug that, bro. Von Jargis, baby. Yeah, absolutely. He's doing his own thing right now. Shout that out is, to the uh, dude. He's cranking tats out for free. <sighs> Tips appreciated. Lord's work. You know? Lord's work. How long has he been apprenticing for? I mean, he's just learning on his own, man. No way. Well, he's over in Germany right now. That's he's over in Germany right now. He's uh he's doing it all out of out of the barracks. He's, oh, he's yeah, actually he's in the army. He's in the he's service. Oh no way. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. M- much love and respect. That's tight. Yeah, but dude, he's sick. <coughs> he'll uh, he'll go live or he used to go live every day, and I'd watch it at work because he's just so drawing, sick. drawing, dude. It's, Sick that's, art. that's the grind, bro. Like, like it's like I have, I have a couple of friends of mine that like that are tattoo or became tattoo artists, and like same thing. Like they'll, they'll be like posting up their art, being like, "Yo, I did this this morning," and it's like some like dope ass shit. I'm like, "Yo, this is fire, bro!" Like it's 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 always cool to see people like grow with their passion and like what, like what they're like good at and passionate about. Like to see them grow in that, it's so tight. And when it's something that you that you've been into, oh yeah. Well, in your case, for example. Mm. At a, such a young age, mm. it just, it, for, I appreciate it so much more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Knowing that you've been in for 13 years. I know I just got in relatively soon, but. Doesn't matter. It's, it's good to see. It's yeah. I, I love seeing that and yeah. that you're still doing Yeah, your like whole I was thing. talking to that guy at work and he was like, bro, he's like, you talk about this with so much passion. And then I'm talking to you and I'm like, holy fuck. I was like, wait. <laughs> it's like, you wait think till, I got passion? Dude, yeah, wait till he hears guy. this. Yeah, well, like, we were dropping it up outside a little bit ago and it was just like, you know, it's like reminiscing stories. about the yeah. about the old times. It's awesome. Shit. Yeah. Because like, like, honestly, like tenure in hardcore is, it's important and it's cool, but like, it's not as important as like, about, as like, as how passionate that you are. Like, like to me, that's what's more important. Because like, people come and go in hardcore man like there's so many hardcore dropouts like bands that are like around and broke up like those dude my first like big ass hardcore festival I ever went to was FTC 2016 90% of those bands have broken up since wow you know and it's like and you don't see those guys in the run anymore and they're like they're playing festivals and shit and then they're just not around anymore it's sad to say it's sad to say but it's true you know it's like but like that passion is what keeps you around you know what I mean so let me ask you this what, yeah. what in your opinion what does a lifer entail a lifer to me is somebody that will make time to focus on hardcore no matter what they got going on in their life. You know what I mean? Where it's just like. In what way? Like, it doesn't matter like what they got scheduled going on. Like if they, if there's a show on a Tuesday an hour away, they'll go. If you know they if if like a, a band drops a demo, they'll repost it. If if their friends are playing a show, they'll shoot a fly. They'll go to their show. They'll support. Like, it's about supporting no matter what your circumstances because like you know in any way in any way it's like whether you go to shows whether you pre-post flyers or like you're just making connections because like the biggest thing i always tell people is like no matter what how long you've been how long you've been in the game no matter who you know just talk to people say like yo your band's fucking tight like oh yo that set was dope as fuck like yo i was at this show with you What's good with it? Like, just holler at people. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, and once you start doing that, people start recognizing you so that when you come around more and more, you're like, oh, I see this guy everywhere, you know? And then, like, if if you so choose to, like, start bands, it's with the fools you see at shows every time you go there. there. They'll be there. And it's just like, yeah, I started, I start like, yo, my band's got a demo. Like, oh, fuck, you're in a band? Yo, I'll share that shit right now, you know? It's a real recognized real thing. A hundred percent. Yeah, like, like, when I went to go see you guys at the minute hour, I was like, this is probably a big fucking deal. Dude, you're a gangster for that. How, how far was that drive? Like, two hours? Yeah, like an hour and a half, probably. Oh, legend. Dude, but my baby... She was not scared. She just said it was too loud. So and I, and so I just cool. told her, I was like, we can leave after this band, okay, baby? So cool. But some guy, like, dove almost right into her. Yeah. And I was like, 
It's over. Uber. Yeah, it's, it's almost over. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there was some some antics after you, like right after. Oh you yeah. Left. Yeah. But dude, that we, we that lineup kind of was like, sick too. We had to get into it with some with some new jacks. So, but it is what it is. You got sometimes you got to regulate. Shit happens. Hey, but sick show. I loved it. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed because like that was dope. Because dude, Apex Predator and Witness Chamber are like two like the dopest bands. They're, They're that's why, so that's good. That's why when I looked at the room, I'd never been to the Minute Hour before. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is so small. Especially for Apex Predator. And I was, was like, it, it was in the small room? Yeah. The small oh, room, okay. yeah. It was so Dude, small. Witness Chamber, during their set, they closed with the breakdown for Proven by Hatebreed, which is my favorite breakdown of all time. Brother. Ruin, Crazy. Ruin was whooping ass. <laughs> the whole band was just like, hey, Proven! I've seen Noah Mosh. Crazy yeah. motherfucker is a problem. Listen, Let's he's kicked me in the head before, oh, yeah. and he said, "You good?" Yeah, and that was it. <laughs> Dude, Noah, Noah is like a problematic mosher, but he's like the most like, "Hey, like, what's up, guys? Like, how you doing?" Like, he's like so chill when you talk to him, but he's like a psycho mosher. Crazy, Dude, I love one it. Of the, one of, so like he he's notorious for like swinging on all of us at shows. Like he just swings on motherfuckers. Dude, one of the things that made me laugh so fucking hard was during Witness Chamber set. He was going side to side, and Chris Root was standing on the side of the pit, and Noah was gunning for him. And so Chris Root covers up. Noah turns around, leads against him, and starts climbing the ladder like this in front of him, dude. And Chris thought he was going to swing. He's covered up, and Noah's like just <laughs> straight up in the air, and I was crying laughing. Um, I like how you have the names for climbing the ladder. Climbing that's the ladder. So sick. Yeah, dude. That's, that's that OS shit. Yeah. I, uh, this is like. You got Theo Vaughn in the background. Uh, got some it changed the video. I, I, I usually put our podcast on in the background, and it's finally done. But uh, our our favorite thing, well, my me personally, I love watching people mosh their style. Dude, I love it. That's my favorite shit. People Brother, watching is the best. Kentucky has the dopest style in the country. That's so sick. Everybody there knows how to mosh. I'm gonna hold it down right now for one specific dude and one specific dude only. Mm-hmm. I I know him as the Master Mosher. That's, master that's Mosher, what we yes. know him as. I don't know his name. I master love Mosher. His style. Put me on. Julian, oh, I'm you know sure him. you know him. You know him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. We, Is that like every Ruin, local show ever? Everyone calls him Mosher Julian. Mosher Julian? <laughs> that's what we call him. See, and we yeah. know him Master, master Mosher. Mosher. Master Mosher, yeah, right dude. His style is so beautiful, and I've told him so many times. I He's love your athletic style. athletic as fuck when he moshes. The master mosher. Oh, that's all you need to know. Mosher. He's a master mosher. He's the that's best. Awesome. Yeah. That's Dude, it. yeah. Because, because like, because like every time you talk about like Julian, it's that like Tran Julian or Mosher Julian. So like, oh, like which Julian? Mosher Julian. Like, oh, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like Mosher Julian is just how we know him. He's the best. Yeah. He's, he's a legend. Dude, and, uh, dude, he's at every local show. Yeah, for sure. And not even like, when I say local, I mean like L.A., Long Beach, O.C. Here. Southern California. SoCal show. show. Yeah. He's, he's a SoCal guy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's, he's And like, again, Olympic level mosher. Yeah. I want to get on a level like that someday. Brother, I've been trying for years. Years. Like, spin kicking from a young age, but that, that don't mean shit. Sometimes where people just have the gift of mosh. He's the style, the he's, grace. He's, oh. I, I tell Hoser, too. You guys have a bounce to you that's so light and like majestic. It's like wow. And I take inspiration from him. Yeah. You know? I yeah. take inspiration from him. You got like a shot gun and he just stole Dude, it. There, there, there's a video on YouTube that changed my life. It's called Japanese Mosh Demonstration Two. <laughs> Do you know about this? Yes, no, dude, absolutely. No, everything, every every band you're saying, I'm literally gonna make a, a note on it uh, while editing and write all these down. I'll make you a playlist. I'll just make another playlist. I got you. But I, I always, dude, I, I always it. see it on Twitter. Wait, if you want to learn how to mosh, Japanese, Japanese mosh, mosh demonstration. Power. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, straight up. So Noah, Noah is like, he's also kind of new to hardcore. Like he's been for a couple of years, but like he, like he's, he's like, he's still doing his homework. And so he sent that video to the chat the other day. Who's like, brother? I'm like, welcome, dude. Like, if Noah starts moshing like that, it might be over for the entire California. He might be the master mosher. But he might be the master mosher. Straight ninjas out there, dude. Ninjas, dude. Because like Noah's so lanky. That he gets so much like distance when he moshes, but like he's so like graceful with it. See, with me when I watch him mosh, it's passionate. It's effortless it's, and it's passionate. It's so much passion. I'm like, yes. fuck, this guy's sick. Yes, that's what it's about, dude. He's got the fire in him, bro. We uh, <laughs> there was this guy, and we thought he was a young kid. So we had we we sunned we sunned a man by accident. 
<laughs> we son the man. Dude, he was just so sick. And we actually told him at the same time. It was at the at the Haven. We're like, bro, your boss style is sick. And he was like, oh, yeah, bro, you guys got sick tattoos. I want tattoos someday. That's why I kind of thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, Guy Mosh is so... He's so light too. I love the light bouncy mosh. That's that's my favorite type of mosh. And so come come to find out a little later on, this was maybe two or three months after that show. Mm. I met up with him at Mosh for Youth. Mm. Found out he was twenty years old. No way. He's a fully grown fucking man, and we're over here thinking he looks like a high school kid. Yeah. Right. And you know that, that it seems like that's more and more common nowadays. But even then, like people that like get into hardcore nowadays, usually it's it's like seventeen, eighteen around, but like. Because they don't have the miles on them yet, you know what I mean? They're just like, yeah, I got 15. I'm like, no, brother, I'm 22. I'm like, oh shit, my fault, gang. Like, damn, you know, that shit happens often, you know. I'm because like I talked to my homie the other day about something. I'm like, yeah, he's like, he's like what, like, like 16, 17. He's like, brother, he's like 21. I'm like, dude, when I get carded or when I don't get carded, I make a big deal about it. Yeah, I was like, guys, I had to get carded today. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the generations that are coming in, it seems like, I mean, I'm not the oldest dude myself, right? 24 years old here. Mm-hmm. But it seems like they're getting, looking younger and younger as yeah, they dude. come. I'm, I'm the second oldest guy in Ruin. So, like, it's funny cause, like, because I've been, in, I've been in the scene longer than anybody in the band other than Chris Noodles. They all call me Unk now, which fucking pisses me off, but it's kind of true. Because, like, I'm, like, the old head. OG, triple OG. That's what I'm saying, bro. Gushers with chamoy and tahin, the best. I'm a candy That's fiend. So fire. I'm a candy fiend. Oh, I feel you, 100. percent What's what's your number one all time? Probably gotta say watermelon sour patch kids. <sighs> that is that is a hood classic, my friend. Watermelon. Oh my yeah, dude, 100. percent That and like, cause like number one for me all time is is like anything Reese's related, but when it comes to like 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 candy gummies. The watermelon sour patch kids and those gummy octopuses. The trolley ones. Yes, sir. The, wa- the watermelon sour patch kids is probably the only candy I'll ever eat. And oh, I- really? I hate candy. No way. Hate it. You're one of those. You want to give these a go? No. <laughs> I'm going to snag one more before. I'm going to snag one more before. Thank you, sir. Oh, we're already back live. I'll just, I'll just put this all in. I'm not a candy guy. Never have been. I will try it. I do like those nerds uh, clusters. Those are good. Oh, those are, those are tight, yeah. But that's about it. You know, and I don't really consider, I, I know you said Reese's, you know, anything Reese's, you, mm-hmm. right? But um, I don't really consider Reese's candy. I really? could, I think that's, that's, a, a, that's a separate a, that's a category. That's a midday snack. Oh, really? I don't consider chocolate candy. I think chocolate is a whole thing in itself. That's very valid. I I see. I kind of I kind of see that, and I kind of agree with that because of like stuff like this: candy, sour patch kids, candy, like candy, 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 candy. Yeah, dude. Give me the cavities, candy. I'm saying you on know? the trip, my snacks was uh, one of those adult lunchables, fire, and two bags of chips. Them and them them shark coochie board gimmicks. Yep, they were good. And then uh, he had maybe. 15 bags of candy for the for the legend, bro. He was like, hey, bro, can you hand me those those uh these ones? The red ones, though. The red ones. <laughs> the, the red ones. And I'd be in the back just digging through. It was yeah, awesome. That's fucking hard. I, I do respect a snack guy, though. I'm not a I'm not a snacker. I'm I am a snacker through and through. Number one snack. Number one snack. Period. Period. Oh fuck. If you had to choose one for the rest of your life, what is it? Damn. So this is like going to be a two part answer because like my number one go to is the is the Gardettos. I love that Gardettos. shit. Gardettos. Yeah, it's like the like they have like the rye chips and the breadstick that'll have like that are like the Italian. Uh, man, how do I how do I explain it? They're like they have rye chips and like it's it's kind of like Chex Mix but like with Italian seasoning on. Okay. Yeah, those. But like in terms of of shit that I have, my like my number one like comfort snack. I love those limon lays. Oh, limon yes. lays. Love. It's gotta be with the hot limon sauce. Lays. Yes. With an extra lemon. Dude, they started doing the chili ones now too. The chili limon, the chili limon ones. They fuck. They're awesome. They're so good. You get the bag and you roll up the bag and you just eat it like you just crunch it up. You only have to use your hands. You think there's any difference between the ones they have in the states and the ones they have in Mexico? Totally. A hundred percent, dude. No question. Everything food wise that is in Mexico is somehow like a little better than like like like, like brand wise like the lace chips down there are better the coke obviously is better because they use real cane sugar and the shit's fire as hell and it's in the bottle yeah dude and plus like jaritos don't get me started bro 
oh my god the soda's better down there the candy's better down there like that's what like like when you go to like Vallarta and they have like all the candies and shit oh I'm in heaven every time are you Hispanic? I am uh, Native American and Hispanic yeah oh okay from that, where where's your, where's your family from originate? Chihuahua Oh, okay. Yeah, so have you've been out to Mexico before, I'm assuming? Yes, I have. See, I, I have not been blessed enough to go to Mexico. Uh, Only TJ. I, uh, that, that counts. Uh, it counts. Yeah, in a way. It, it, it counts a little bit. I've never been, like, like to the home, like, the motherland. But, like, I, like I've been to TJ, like, once, and I've, I've been to... But it was kind of, like, the south part of TJ, like, kind of farther in. And, but, like, even still, that, was, that still kind of counts. Because like, that's, that's still, like... Mexico. Did you ever play a show down there? Would I or did I? W- would you? 100%. Have you? 100%. I had not. 100% I would, though. I saw Abstain and went down there recently. Dude, we were supposed to go down there. So my old band toured with A6DC, one of the best bands of all time. We, we toured with them, and the routing was supposed to go San Diego, TJ, up to Arizona. But we ended up not being able to go to, to, to Mexico because it was just like too crazy down there. Yeah. So we ended up scrapping that show, but we were supposed to go down there. So that would have been sick, but unfortunately not this time around. But I would I would for sure. I'm sure that show would have been popping. Popping. Dude, you know what's crazy is like the scene down there in like in like Mexico and like South America, now more than ever, like people just fucking love hardcore. Dude. Like dude, so one of my bands, um, the band called Ozai from Singapore Valley, we are kind of scheming, kind of plotting. We're thinking about going down to Peru. Oh. Because, cause like, there's a bunch of bands down there that are, like, dope as fuck that I, I, I wish I wrote them down because I don't have them on hand, but, like, just look at, like, Peruvian hardcore bands. They're sick. And, like, like they all sound like Section Hate, but, like, faster. It's awesome. And we were just like, dude, like, because um, our drummer is, like, an anthropology major, so he's, like, he's been through a bunch, like, like doing, like, study work, and, like, I was also into hardcore, so, like, he has, like, hella connections out there, so he's, like, yeah, we, we just have to get down there. He's, like, is there anything else we can just, like... For one, it's cheap, and I hear the food's fire. Unbelievable. You know what, correct me if I'm wrong, Peru is Machu Picchu, right? I believe so. I think so, too. But, dude, imagine you know... playing a set there? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my <laughs> God, brother. That is that would be that would be like number one all time, bro. Just on principle alone. You'd have to be the biggest band in the world, not even hardcore, just <laughs> just to play in Machu Picchu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would be? Who would even play there right now? I think tsunami. <laughs> Biggest show of all time, I think, what was it, Rod Stewart on a beach? Oh, yeah, we talked about Something that in Brazil. Like that. No way. It was like 2.5 million people on a beach. What? Yeah. What the fuck? I'm when was this? The the early thousands. Oh, no way. Wait, right? Um, I'm, assu- I'm assuming it's Rod Stewart's prime. I don't, I don't know exactly when that is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know when that is. Thousand either. Baby here. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, not that... Uh, I don't remember. The picture looked pretty clear to me when I looked it up. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing 90s. 90s. At, at least 90s. 90s. But yeah, the whole beach, and it was just him. <sighs> See, that type of shit is crazy to me, you know? Because I'm just like, 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 damn, you could do that with music? That's crazy. Do you know any Rush? Fuck yeah, absolutely. So, like I, I told you outside, like, what concert would you want to be at like, that you didn't go to? What concert is it that you, that you wish that you saw? <sighs> Metallica, Seattle, 1989, on, on the Does For All tour. Have you seen the videos from that t- show? Dude, no. in, in my humble opinion, it is... The greatest live concert any band has ever played, ever. It's like Metallica in their prime at a stadium in Seattle, like with a camera pan, you just see like from the floor to the ceiling just people who know every fucking word. And like Metallica, like I have this hat that says every band fucking sucks, but uh, except for Metallica. Kind of true, <laughs> if you think about it. Like, like we're all just doing Metallica at the end of the day. Yeah, I just told them. Uh, I my answer was Rush Rio 2002. No way. It's a sold out stadium from floor, like you said, floor to the top. Mm. Everyone's bouncing. Yeah. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing That's for the whole four hour crazy. set. And Rush, they don't have they don't have any openers. Yep. And they'll play four hours straight. See that type of shit is so gangster to me, cause like, dude, cause like, I, there's maybe like a handful of bands ever who can do that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure Foo Fighters could do that, cause they they did play for like what three hours or something like that. But yeah, like like Rush, maybe Tool, and like two other bands ever who could probably play for four straight hours and have that kind of draw for four straight hours. Unbelievable. 
unbelievable. That, but, that's a good concert to see too oh, on yeah, the internet. Sure. And both bands, they have a similar fan base to where just they're straight geeked out on these yep. guys. You know, they will yeah, they know Rush every heads. single oh, thing. Yeah, for sure. Tool and fucking Rush. You yeah. know, they, they know every single thing about them. And I'm sure that they they probably share a lot of fans too. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. A, a lot of intellectuals, I think, as well, dude. You know, it, it's well, like you saw the documentary, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it beyond the lighted stage? Mm. Great documentary. You should look it up. Mm. Uh, it just shows how like Neil and all them, instead of like going out partying every night, they'd be reading, and like that's how they get their lyrics. And that's why their lyrics are so like wow. That's yeah. That's that's badass, dude. Because like yeah, like like when I was like when I was a kid, like I grew up on like sticks and rush and like they kind of like kind of more proggy like yes and like king crimson and like I the more sticks, proggy they're stuff really yeah i'd love to see sticks bro we, we kicked around covering renegade for a song like just just to say fuck it <laughs> or like open with it or something like that because like that's that 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 song is like low-key gangster that's a dope ass song yeah but yeah like like bands like that who can do that i have like so much respect for so much respect for because like i couldn't do that I couldn't do that ever, you know. It's like I, I play hardcore, bro. I think it's just a passion. Twenty yeah. minutes and I'm gassed, dog. Like, see, but those twenty minutes, you show so much so in those twenty hard. minutes. Yeah. You and although you may not be saying much, you say so much yeah. with 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 what you play. And, I, and we're not trying to say that Rush doesn't show a lot in twenty minutes. No, no, for sure. Hardcore, like when I was when, when he just introduced me to hardcore, I was looking it up and I was like, what is hardcore? And then this guy put it perfectly. It was like it's like every instrument is trying to compete with each other. Who can play the hardest and loudest? Mm. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of fucking hardcore. Cause mm. it's, I just love it. I love it. I love hardcore. So, 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 what is your story with hardcore? How did you, how did you like get into like so basically, bands? It was right before the pod. It was like right when the pod started. And he was like, hey, bro. He's like, would you ever want to go to one of these to me? And he puts on Gulch 2022. And I was like, that was sick. And then it just started from there. And then finally, I ended up. He kept inviting me, inviting me. I told him, don't stop inviting me. I will eventually go. I promise. That's what you got to do, bro. Yeah. That's just, what you got to do. And same thing. I, I keep inviting people. Mm -hmm. But uh, he sent me the show. He's like, hey, we should go. We ended up going. It was the Zulu show. And I started listening to all the bands. I dove deep into Zulu and show me the body Dude, like hard. That is a dope for a show. Yeah. That is a dope for a show. I wish I got to see it. But yeah, yeah, it was awesome. We heard it. We heard it from the outside. It was sick. But uh. I just dove so deep into that, and then after that, it just branched out. Yeah, that's how and it And then starts. my next show I went to was uh, Drain, Drug Church. Who else was there? Magnitude, Magnitude. Gum. Oh, I was there. I was, at, I was at that show. At the Velasco. Mm -hmm. I was there. Gum was sick. I love yeah, Gum. Yeah, Gum's the, Yeah, they're sick. They're sick. And then uh, I've only felt this way with Drug Church. I've never felt with any other band so far. I just felt like euphoric. Dude, okay. Drug Church, for me was one of those bands where like it kind of made me question what defines a hardcore band because like drug church is like a bunch of hardcore dudes playing non-traditional yeah. hardcore but the responses they get from the hardcore crowd are is like the dopest shit ever because like you have people at like uh ldb last year who like do people are getting fucked up during the drug church shit like stage diving like crazy like I've been waiting for them to come out on tour again dude I saw them on the hygiene tour at Chain Reaction and it was like one of the coolest like things I've seen so at this time when I was at that show mm. I was about like 380 pounds mm. and my personal opinion Big Boy should not be jumping off stage <laughs> and, it's, it's, it's about how you carry it and I've never felt this way about anybody before and my knee just started feeling good again <laughs> And I was like, I'm, I'm going off the stage. And I jump off the stage, and I went to land, and someone pushed me, and that's when I oh. landed on my bad leg. So I think they tried to catch me, but I ended up just bang. And yeah. oh, oh man, I felt intense pain, but I was that, still just that, locked in. And that Belasco stage is not short. It was. That is a tall stage. But I've never, ever felt that way with any other band. Yep. But it's only live. I still listen to them like on Spotify. Yeah, I'm still sick as fuck. But that live, I felt like connected to the singer. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, that's basically with me with hardcore. He'll send me bands. I'll send him bands, but mostly him. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, dude, you know what's crazy? And then I and I've said this to people before, like people that are trying to get the, to get into hardcore, like you know, like you know that turnstile lyric where he goes, "You have to see it live to get it." That's just what it is every time. Like people that are trying to get into hardcore, who like adjacent type music, I'm like, bro, just come to a show. Like, like, it doesn't matter if you know any of the music. Just come to a show. 
and like even if they don't listen to it they come to them they're like i get it now it's it's the atmosphere you just feel something different when you're there it's the ethics brother it's it's the ethics it's the camaraderie it's it's the vibe at the time yeah exactly that's exactly what i'm talking about like that that is it's everything you know and you feel it with everything because like like you see bands just kind of like hanging out and like kicking it and like some dude's like yo what's up dog and he's like what's up brother and like just daps him up and like keeps it going you know what i mean it's badass like there's no other genre of music where the bands are going to be kicking it with the normal people you know and like in that way and have it not be like some like weird cringy like let's get a photo type shit you know because like it's all because like they're just people they're just guys and like nobody's trying to get famous off their shit it's all for the love of the game like it just happens yeah, now happens. that it's that it's more popular than ever before and people are getting famous off of it you know but nobody's intentionally gonna start a hardcore band being like i wanted the biggest band in the world you know what i mean it's not hardcore not at all dude and like dude like even knock loose being the biggest band on the fucking planet right now they still play in hardcore ba- hardcore bands outside of Knock Loose, and they still, like, Isaac still moshes hard as fuck. Dude, when they played Midnight Hour, uh, that Knock Loose, Beyond Repair, oh, Twitching yeah, Tongue yeah. show, N- Isaac was in the pit moshing hard as fuck for Beyond Repair awesome. before he was supposed to headline that show. In the pit moshing hard as shit. That's what hardcore is supposed to be. You know what I mean? And, like, when Brian was leaving in L.A., he was coming to shows in, like, midnight hour and coming to shows, like, just to come and hang out. Like, even at LDB, I saw him, and I was like, I was like bro, that's him. Yeah. And I was like, I was surprised no one was swarming him. Because yeah. he's, Knock Loose is giant. Dude. I thought people would have just, like, oh, I need a photo, but no one. They're, they're, playing, they're playing over a huge band, like, soon. I don't know who it is. But, like, like there's... See? No, it's not speed. Well, speed, yeah, but because they're they're playing that Slipknot Stadium tour, and who else is on that show? It's like it's like Vended, another band, Knock Loose, and then like Slip, like Knock Loose is playing direct support. No, Knock Loose is playing. I'm gonna look this up. Knock Loose is playing direct support to Slipknot in a stadium over a band that's like insane. Well, I mean, those dudes were at Sick New World, and that's proof in the pudding right there. That the, the, yeah, the they, reaction they was it the Demon Stage or the Devil Stage? Was it Demon Stage? No, they played the Spiral Stage. Yeah, that's what I mean. They weren't they weren't on the hardcore stage. There they was a stage like just for hardcore, stage. which I think is dope as fuck. By the way, they weren't on that. They were on a big stage. That's yeah, dope. And the yeah. reaction they got at at such a big festival with so many crazy big bands, that is just proof in the pudding that hate breed. They're playing over hate breed. Fuck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. Dude, this lineup, it's not Fest Iowa. It's Guar, Poison the Well, Hatebreed, Knock Loose, Slipknot. Guar, they, they're the guys that dress up, right? Yeah. Sick. Have you Dope seen them? Guar? I, I've seen them. Viva La Bam. That's my introduction to them. Uh, yeah, Viva dude. Bam, fuck right? yeah. Hell yeah. You sent me that playlist, right? Yeah. And uh, I had no idea. It was Hatebreed, Not One, uh, not not one Truth. Truth. And then I was like, yeah. why do I know this song? Because I don't really know that much Hatebreed. And then I told Hoser, and I was like, I was like, dude, Av State covered this shit. Yeah, they did. And I think it's better. And all of Ruin was in the pit, just fucking. There was not one truth cast in the stone. Just fucking down, 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 down. Because I had no idea, and I was like, this song is sick. Yeah. And then, well, I the first time I saw you guys at that Long Beach house, mm-hmm. and the guy was like, I know why you guys are all here now, and he plays it. Plays it. And yep. I was like, I was like, why? Why would he say that? Yep. I was like, I think your vice is like way better than this song. <laughs> and then I finally understood after he sent me the playlist, like so much later, it was. I laughed actually. Hey, hey Breed is the blueprint for every like every band is doing Metallica and every band is doing Hey Breed. Does like the amount of like I I think you could probably if I had a dollar for every time a band covered Hate Breed in a year, I would probably never have to work again ever. Cause like d- dude, it listen you put out four, five in my opinion, perfect hardcore records with breakdowns that nobody has ever thought of doing before that every band after is ripping off. You did something. Something has happened. Change the trajectory. Change the trajectory of, of the world. Literally the world. You know? Like, dude, seeing Hey Breed at LDB was like... Awesome. It was, it was such a dope experience because it was like songs I never thought that I would ever get to see live. But they're out here ripping songs off the demo. Like, they're playing Under the Knife, which they never fucking play. It's like... So basically what you're saying is I have to take the deepest dive on a hate breed. Brother, go and work. Go, go from satisfaction to proven to yes, fucking... Sir. 
Understood. perseverance, you know, especially perseverance. with how, especially with how big they are too. Like, I, I they kind of went commercial in a way with they for sure did you know, they for but sure did. they still they're. They're still not put down for it at all. No, They're still all. recognized yeah. as goaded. They they just became a festival band. That's all it is. They just, they just, they just became like a just festival metal band. No, fuck no. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because I thought they were like the biggest hardcore band ever of all time. Yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Like they they, they are the biggest legacy band of all time. Okay. But I think Knocked Loose is kind of getting to the point of being bigger than Hatebreed at this point in time. But obviously, you can't take away from that because Knock Loose only been around for about a decade, and Hatebreed's been around for Ever. almost three times that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so. I, I mean, I'd also attribute that to kind of with social media nowadays for and stuff sure. like that too. I'm sure that contributes so much more 100%. and brings in so yeah. much more fans and stuff like that con- yeah, compared absolutely. to the when Hatebreed was in their prime. A hundred percent. Gimmick hardcore on yeah, Instagram. Absolutely. They uh, they sound sick. I've never seen any footage of them actually playing, but they just post memes with their songs over it. And yeah, they get thousands, thousands of likes. Of views, yeah, I think I've sent it to you before. Is it no gimmick? It's no, not no gimmick. It's gimmick, gimmick X H C. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. they have good songs. They're from Alabama. Very funny memes. But their memes are hilarious, and Dude, that's what gets likes. My girlfriend sends me those memes like all the time. She's like, "Yo, it's just you." I'm like, "Man, <laughs> like," but yeah, I, I I feel that. But yeah, it's like. We, like me and my friends kind of have this debate with our, like a friend group like what's the last like good hate breed record but that's like so unfair because like hate breed just they changed the trajectory of the band that's all they did but like like I still like the festival stuff sometimes you know like they put out an instant classic 25 years into their career they put out um, looking down the barrel of today that that came out in 2016 they've been a band since 19 like 90 something and they're st- and they're, and they're still, still yeah. fucking ripping, yes. They're still putting out fuel. And they still sound unbelievable, you know. Like the tenure they have is f- unmatched, man. I love a breed. The problem, my problem is, is like, they're, like he loves OG bands. I love OG bands yeah, too. Absolutely. But recently, like the past few months, mm-hmm. I just can't get off the local bands. I can't. That's good. Literally, like, my dude, five by five? don't lose that. That I that know. that is what. Listen. That is what keeps this shit going, is that. Of you being like, fuck, this band from 10 minutes away is the dopest I've ever heard in my life. I'm going to go see them every time they play. Five by five That's why they do it. Months, mm-hmm. literally, I, it's it's switching off between Ruin mm-hmm. and 97 Minutes at the Top. Shout out. Thank Dark you very much. Baba and, that's, 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 and Taylor Swift. I'm a Swifty. <laughs> that is real as fuck. That is real as fuck. I, dude, my, so my homegirl actually got me the tour shirt. Uh-huh. And so, like, I was rocking out of practice, and my friend was like, what the fuck? I'm like, Dude, don't hate, bro. To, H- Hoser is a, is a fan of music, so he's not a hater. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Swift, 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 too. Swifty has the bops. Dude, s- listen, Taylor's version of Speak Now. Dude, when that shit dropped, I don't think there was anything else to listen to for, like, a, like two weeks after that. It's because, uh, I don't know, did I talk about the why I started being a Swifty on the pod? I have two copies of it on vinyl, brother. Basically, like my girlfriend, she loves Taylor Swift. Nope. But we always take my car, and she knows driver driver gets privileges. Music. Yeah. And, and it's always hardcore. Totally fair. Sorry. Very fair. And I said, you know what? I feel fucking bad. Sometimes I want to get you to some of your music. I do the same shit. Yep. And I went on a, I, from top to bottom, every album, even if I didn't like the song, I'd listen to it and I'd add it to a playlist. So right now I got like a 70 song playlist of just T Swift. Huge. And dude, Huge. I love it. Dude, it's funny. Me, me and my girlfriend do the same thing. I mean, I'm very fortunate because my girlfriend also likes hardcore and shit. And, like, because, like, me and her, like, m- musically are, like, very much, like, you know? So, like, she likes all the hardcore shit that I like. I like the, like, weird goth punk shit that she likes. So, it's like... Do you like any rap? Fuck yeah. Have you ever heard of JPEG Mafia? Uh, dude, I saw JPEG in Berkeley for free at a park. It was awesome. It was badass. You ever That's heard it. of JPEG Mafia? Absolutely. He's got, he's got the dopest dope. beats. Dude, I saw JPEG open for Deftones in San Diego for my 18th birthday. No, 21st birthday. I just got put onto him, right? And the, the guy, he was trying to put me onto somebody. I put him onto Ruin. He was trying I, to put me onto him. He's like, I'll put you onto somebody. And uh, 
He was like, hey, bro, he's really weird. He's very weird. And then he was like, you're probably not going to like it. And I was like, I'm just going to listen to it. And I was like, this guy's fucking dope. Yeah, he's weird, but like in a do- like in a way that's just like, damn, this guy's cool as fuck. And he has a, I guess there's like someone asking him a question and he's like, I guess he hates on white people a lot. <laughs> and he was it's like, very funny. He was like, I can't actually hate on white people because they're the only people that buy my tickets. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude, you know, you know who else said something similar was as uh, uh, Vince Staples? Dude, Vince Staples, if you ever listen to him in an interview? He's one of the funniest human beings of all time. Do you, do you, do you know who Kenny Beats is? Uh-oh. Kenny Beats is a producer who like does like a bunch of hip hop shit. He just ended it, but he had a show on YouTube called The Cave, where like he'd have rappers come into his studio and he'd like make a beat in ten minutes, have him freestyle over it. That's awesome, dude. Him and him and Vince, their chemistry is so funny because like Vince could call him White Devil. He's like, you're the police, bro. <laughs> like, it's so funny. Yo, dude, if Vince was, if Vince Staples wasn't a rapper, he was definitely gonna be a stand-up comic. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Or he's the funniest. Both, you know, he he kind of already is doing both, bro. Like, he he be doing bits like crazy in interviews. Well, especially with the, sh- I think he's got a show now too, right? Mm-hmm. Vince Staples show. Yeah. That I've I've only seen. Uh, the little snippets of it, but mm-hmm. from what I've seen, the shit's hilarious. He's so, he's so funny. You know Christina P? Yeah, fuck yeah. Go to see her on Wednesday. Nice, dude. My girl loves her. Dude, one of one, one of my favorite comedy shows I've ever been to was I went to. It was at um, the comedy store. It was it was like it was basically it was like YMH night. It was Sickler, Christina P, Tom Segura headlined, and um, who else did who else did a set? Uh, a couple of people did sets. It was awesome. But it was at the comedy store. What's, what's etiquette at a... That was a banging lineup. What's, what, what's, what's comedy etiquette? I've never been to any comedy show. Just DI for phone and shut the fuck up. That's all you gotta do. Can I just dress like this? Yeah, absolutely. No one gives a shit. You know, Wonderful. We've, we've been fans of Kill Tony for a while now. Love it. And we've... we got to make a trip down there. Dude. we got to make a trip down there to Austin. Hit your boy up. I love Austin. I've been trying to go back for goddamn ever. If you guys go, dude, hit, your, hit my line. What's it like? Austin? Yeah. Dude, so it's it's kind of like, it's a very, like, liberal town, uh-huh. but, like, in a way that's just, like, it's very much, like, kind of artsy. It's a very, like, like liberal arts town. Really, there's a lot of, like, fusion cuisine. There's a lot of, like, art installations and, like, galleries and, like, venues. There's a lot of... Um, small businesses and like and like locale there which is awesome um but dude the food down there is fucked up like fucked up in a good way in a good way oh. cuz like a- anything that you could ever want is down there but also like they have like the craziest like Tex-Mex, but like not shitty Tex-Mex, and like fusion stuff there that you wouldn't even wouldn't even think of, but it's unreal how good it is. Cause um, I went down there one time to see Kublai Khan and this band that's not around anymore called, called from Boston called Vanna, and I flew to Austin to go to the last like touring date show. So I, I ended up going down there and we stayed in Austin for a couple of days, and I was just like. Like it was the only time I've ever been like, damn, maybe I can, maybe I can leave California. Maybe maybe California is you know, maybe this is this is the next step. You know? It seems like Austin's becoming the next biggest melting pot in America. For sure, yeah. e- easily, because like there's so much culture there, and again, like like I said, like it's it's a liberal arts town, so like everybody has a place there. Because like like anything you want to do, you can do in Austin. It's awesome. Like, and because of Texas, it's just so free. It's huge. Right? It's it's yeah, like it's it's so free, but also it's so like, because you know, I mean, obviously, East Texas and South Texas get pretty gnarly in yeah. terms of like the discrimination, like other laws that they enforce them. It's it's pretty gnarly, uh, but Austin is still a very like left leaning city. Where's Austin in the state of Texas? West Texas. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 closer to to, to New Mexico. So it's New Mexico was dope. By the way, when we drove through. New Mexico's awesome. It's beautiful. Me and my, my, girlfriend, my girlfriend has family out there, so we're going to probably go, to, go out there, I think, maybe in the fall and, like, go there. Because I've, I've never been. So we're, we're going to go down there. But, uh, but yeah, like, like it's, it's like West Texas, so it's still a lot more, like, you know, West-influenced. Like, there's people, like, obviously, when that mass exodus from California happened, everybody went to Austin. Yeah. But, but there's a reason they went to Austin, because it, it's, it's awesome down there. Like, it's, I, I love it down there. It's humid as fuck, but, like, the city's so cool, you kind of don't care. What's the hardcore scene like out there? It's very respectful. It's very much, like... People don't get down like that in Texas, cause like, cause like the whole like Southern hospitality thing. I don't think they don't get down in Texas, but like they don't, they don't, 
they don't go ape shit in Texas because like it's very it's very respectful, it's very much like like in the moshing. Yeah, like 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 the moshing, the etiquette's very respectful. Like like uh, Kublai Khan played. This, by the way, this was like in like 2016 or 2015, but I did a front flip off the stage and everyone was like, "You're fucking crazy, bro! What the fuck?" I'm just like, but in California, that's like every show. You're like, dude, this is like. This is Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then again, that is crazy because I'm I would never imagine myself doing a fucking front flip off a of stage. I, I am not as spry. The last front flip I did was uh, when Mind Force played Excalibur in San Jose. I was like, let me take it back for the one time. But I'm not I'm not as as flippy as I used to be. Like yeah. I used to do like backflips off monitors when I was like really young. Like back when like you know like when you hit the floor you kind of bounce a little bit. Like things didn't hurt as much as they do now. Dude, dude now. I feel you. Dude, you know it's fucked up. I, I Fury played Chain Reaction with uh, Magnitude, Gun, and uh, Fill the Flames. And, like, I was stage diving Fury. I love Fury. One of my favorite bands. I was stage diving whatever. And the next day, I was like, man, I feel fucked up right now. Dude, I'm like, damn, maybe this shit is getting to me, man. Like, after after acting a fool for the over a decade, I'm just like, damn it. It's catching up to me. Fuck. You know, you got to stretch and limber up for you over there. Brother, I'm, I have like, when I'm moshing, I got like wrist braces on, I got knee braces on. Like, I'm fighting for my life out here, bro. <laughs> like, you need to stretch your team too, dude. Because, yeah. I mean, after after Mosh for Youth, dude, my hips are feeling it. Feeling it. Feeling it. D- dude, yeah. sp- spin kicking is not as easy as it used to be. And, like, I'm only 25, I'm like, I'm 40 goddamn years old, but. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. We should be, we, this should be our prime right now. You know what I mean? I, I keep, like this. I keep making jokes that I age in dog years. Just, <laughs> just because of like how physical that I am at shows. It's like. But you go to a lot of shows, huh? A lot of shows. Yeah, a lot so of that, shows. It, what what kind of uh, work do you do? Because I would imagine that kind of has something to do as well. Yeah, so I'm a contractor for like like pools and things like that. So like, yeah, I felt any, I felt those hands. Any any like, <laughs> I'm saying, bro, like I'm fucking ashy as fuck I, right now. I just imagine, oh, this guy's definitely got to be some type of blue collar with hands oh, yeah, like that. Dude, yeah, like like uh, you know anything that has to do with, um service repair or installation of commercial and residential bodies of water. I I work with. I love it. Yeah, so it's like very blue collar, but like I'm very fortunate because, you know, my bosses know what I do outside of work, and like you know, they give me time off to tour. They're like very flexible because like I can kind of make my own schedule. So like if I need to leave on a Friday, I I can basically do my Friday and Thursday jobs over the course of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I can have Friday off to have a three day weekend to go or play a show, travel, whatever, like, I'm going to tie down, and so I hit up my boss, and I was like, yo, can I, um, can I get Friday off, can I just move my pools over a day, to, to I can leave on Friday morning, he's like, yeah, no problem, so, like, they're That's very awesome. cool with that, yeah. What more could you ask for? Dude, as a lifer, right? I have, I have no co-workers I gotta deal with, like, I, I do, but, like, we work on separate areas, like, I, I can listen to music all day in my headphones, I listen to podcasts and music all day. I can take I can take time off when I need to. I can do my thing, and I still have like a a well paying job. It's like a nine to five. So like when I'm not touring, when I'm not doing shit, I'm at home. I can just work my ass off and stack bread for when I leave and go to wherever. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm in the perfect position right now to do both. And like I'm, I'm gonna say this now: if you're starting a band, unless you absolutely have to, do not quit your job. Don't do it. Like, find a job that lets you do both, straight up. Because it's like, this music shit is not forever. Like, there there is a shelf life on all of it. And, like, and, and Pandemic proved that. Where, like, all these bands who their, their main source of income was touring, you can't do that now. Now what do you do? What do you have to fall back on? You know what I mean? Because, like, again, I was fortunate because we were essential workers because having pools turn green is a health risk. So we're essential workers, so we were able to work. But... 95% of touring bands couldn't do shit, you know? It's like a lot of them got jobs. They went back to doing like barista work. They worked at restaurants. They did like graphic design. They started printing merch things like that. Like so the jobs they had before. Before the bands. So it's so it's like you got to have them to fall back on because this music shit is not for everybody. Or not forever, I mean. But it's like the fact that I'm able to have a job and do both is like, dude, awesome. I'm also, very blessed. And also not for everybody because I'm sure touring can take a super major toll on your body. Dude, touring is awful. Like, touring is cool for about five hours a day. That doesn't count because, like, imagine you're you're in a van with 
five to seven other people driving, you know, four to seven hours every day, losing sleep because, you know, you get to the venue at five. You're trying to find time to eat, trying to find time to hydrate, trying to find time to sleep. You're trying to find time to do everything that doesn't involve like playing in the show, yeah. you know? And then like, if if, if, you're, if you wanna be a real one, you're in the venue watching every band play, you're communicating with the promoters yeah, of the sure venues, you know have to, it's, it is essential. Like that is my number one priority is that no matter what show I'm at, you watch every band no matter what. It's because respect. It's respect and you never know who that band's gonna be in five years. So if like, you know, if you're, if you're playing a show with somebody and you know, you rock the gig, and they play before you, and you're there supporting, and you're, and you're like, yo, like, this band supported us when we played 10 people. They were there rocking with us. We're going to go on a tour with insert band here. Let's bring them with us, yeah. you know? And it's, and, and, it's, and it's like, and that, it's that give and take. It's that ebb and flow. Like, everybody. Not even just the bands, the, the promoters, too. A hundred percent, dude. That. Yeah, and it's like, yo, that band was tight as fuck. They were really respectful. I'm putting on a big show at Insert Venue. Let's have them come up and give them a piece of the pie. You know what I mean? It's that ebb and flow of just like, if you're, if you're playing this music to get famous, you're in the wrong line of work, dude. Like, Bands like Scowl, bands like Tsunami, bands like Knock Loose, that is that is the exception, not the rule. Like, do you know how many bands start and break up every single day in California alone? So many, dude. Like, like I said, like you can look back at festivals from two from before pandemic, and like bands are are not around anymore. That were dope. Like, you know, bands like Dare, Step for Change, Crime Watch, that are like sick bands that like just aren't around anymore and you know we kind of have a similar experience with that as far as uh being in the podcast game right a hundred percent yeah we've been doing this for about roughly two years give or take a little little over two years that's awesome and so um the number of podcasts that we see that get started up and shut down yeah because the the reception that they got wasn't what they wanted. Yeah, it's it's insane. It's something it's, that we like. We care about it, but we don't care about it. Yeah, absolutely. And we make it a fucking priority every Thursday at one o'clock in the morning. There will be an episode out. Dude, see that that it's the grind. We it's we drove class. out. We we drove. He picked me up early for work. Mm. We drove to Arizona to watch U.S. versus Mexico, and I edited it in the car while he drove. And dropped it. Fire. Dropped it. See, and that type of shit is the same ethics as the hardcore bands. Where, like, you're making time to do things that you love because for the love, for the passion. Not because you want to get famous, because you want to get clicks. That's secondary. It's be- You're doing it because this is something that I enjoy. This is something that I want to spend time on and, like, actually commit to and do. That's fucking badass, man. And although the clicks aren't coming right now in due time. 100%. In due time. And, w- and when you get them clips to go viral, dude, that, that like, payoff, just like, fuck, we did something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, me and him had a talk with it recently. I told him, I was like, dude, this guy has someone edit his videos and shit for him, and he's like, yeah, but think about it in, in a fucking five years, and say he makes it big. He didn't work for that shit. Yeah. But we work for that shit. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Like, he comes over every Wednesday and edits his fucking half, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we fucking do all that. Yeah, we're doing this shit on a weekly basis. And that is, that's awesome. That is sick. Like, and don't lose that. Don't like, lose question that. question with, with the band thing working. Sure. How do you guys practice? We just, so everybody works different jobs, different schedules, because, like, like, Noah does marketing. Chris works, in, Chris Root is an in and out soldier, legend. He's, he's my guy. Busy he, ass one? Um, they're all busy they're ass all ones, busy. dude. Yeah, they got their right. times. Right. But like, like Benny works uh, in uh, in OC as well. I work in like La Cunada, Glendale, that uh, area. And so, like, oh, there's like, a ton of pools out there. Oh my god, they're rich out there. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> brother. After the pod, I'll give you some names of some people I've, whose pools nice. I've worked on. You would not believe. But yeah, like we just kind of figure out like, hey. This day, everybody's free. You know, like, well, I gotta work at this time, I go at this time. Like, sometimes, like, we've practiced before Chris goes into work, after he gets off work, after Noah gets off. Like, there's been times, because, like, Noah lives, Noah lives in, in OC. Damn, I almost dropped that. And the, he, but he works in, in LA. So there's been times where, like, he's gotten off of work and driven straight to practice in OC from LA. Like, commuted an hour and a half just to get to practice. Did you guys just do it in somebody's garage, or...? No, we, we have a space. Um, we, we practice at a, a studio in um, Santa Ana. Shout out to Hunter. He's the fucking man. Um, but, like, he hooks us up, because, like, he, he, like... He keeps saying, like, yo, ruins my favorite band, which is very, very funny. Thank you. But, like... 
he always like makes time for us of just like, hey, this band canceled a slot. Do you guys want to come practice? And we'll say, yeah. And like he does this thing where like he'll charge us for whatever time we book. And he's like, hey, nobody's in here after you guys. You can stay as long as you want. And so like like we'll practice for extra time and then like we'll just come hang out in the office and like listen to his new mixes and like talk bands and like take it with him, whatever. Like he came he came to that house show in Long Beach and he was in there moshing hard as fuck. Hunter's the man. He's he's a, he's like an OC old head that like likes the band. The, my first experience with Lemus from Stateside. Shout out to Lemus, bro. I think I told you, Holzer was moshing for you guys, right? Mm. And I'm sitting there on the edge. Thank God he didn't push me. You know, Lemus, not the tallest guy. Mm. <laughs> this guy next to me, bro. <laughs> this guy is. This guy's Love like, you, Lemus. This guy's like seven foot tall. Yeah. And just shoves the fuck out of him. And goes <laughs> boom, boom, and the guy just flies in and just starts moshing. And I was like, Oh, thank fuck. God that wasn't me. Where was this at? This is at the Long Beach uh, no house show. Way. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh my God. Wait, who was that during? Was that during us? Yeah. <laughs> I did not I didn't even know about this. It was awesome. What the fuck? But dude, it's always the smaller dudes that got the most fucking strength. Lemus has Riz, bro. Lemus has Moss Riz. My oh. fault, my fault, my fault. I was no, like, he hey, probably, w Riz. He probably got Riz like that too though. I'm, I'm Riz, sure. Riz I'm sure. Really I'm sure he does. But yeah, Lemus has Moss Riz like crazy, bro. He used to he used to play in a band called Serenity from San Diego. And like they were like, like, like a heavy like metalcore or panic core band. And Dude, he used to come like when we used to play with him. He used to come over and just like m- like before his set, mosh hard as fuck. Play his set, mosh hard as fuck after the set. Lemus is awesome. I love that fool. But yeah, like like he he be fucking he be in there moshing, bro. He's a legend. Yeah, dude. Oh man, that I just remember that, and I was thinking, I was like, I'm so lucky. I didn't have my brace on. I was just sitting there, and I was like, I'm not moshing today. It would have been over. <laughs> it would have been over. He would have exploded. Yeah. Yeah, but but it was that tall, lanky dude. Cause yeah. Good for him. Yeah, and, and he seriously. did much. So yeah. Sick. Especially with all that patchy dirt and grass that they had there. <laughs> it was wild. Do you know what's funny? That that was my first time playing guitar for Ruin. I was terrified. Terrified. But it sounded pretty good, so I'll I'll, I'll take it. Because I was I was the, the bass player originally, and then I moved to guitar. Because Noah Noah, so we're like rolling in, in a Discord together of like a, like a big ass like server. It's it's like the IEHC Discord server, but it's like people from like all over the the, the state, and so like like we're all in there talking, and then Noah posted. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna start like a Moshcore project at like King Nine Queensway type shit. Anybody down?" And I hit up Noah, and I was like, "Brother." Let me get in there. He's like, okay, dope. Like, you want to play bass? And I was like, absolutely. And he was like, okay, sick. And then, like, see me the demos. I'm like, hey, these songs are kind of fucked up. Like, I was like, because, like, Noah, Noah has this way of writing where, like, 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 he's crazy. So, like, the way that he thinks, the way that that translates into him writing the songs is, like, who thinks to do that type shit? Like, the riffs are fucked up, but they're so, like, bouncy and groovy and catchy. You're just like, damn, this should be hitting, too. Like, it was funny because when he sent me the demo, I would just, like, listen to it and just kind of rock with it. I'm just like, this is kind of sick, bro. And so, like, it's cool that, like, people also f- demo. So, yeah, like, like because we, we actually just tracked... Um, this is an exclusive. We just tracked two new songs last weekend that we're probably going to drop as soon as we get them mixed yeah. and shit. Yeah. So, because we, we played both of those songs in this last run. And then we played one of the songs of the show you came to. Yes. We played a, we played a new song. And so th- th- those will be out hopefully by the end of summer. Hell so. yeah. So we're looking at a quick little EP soon, huh? Just quick little two song promo. Just something dope. Beautiful. Just to get it out. Just to get it out. The, that provoked that new oh my gosh. gosh that's a provoke dude that so sick so they were nice enough to let me do the auditory anguish feature with them on tour every night and that shit was so fucking sick dude andrew is a fucking monster vocalist uh, oh, okay. andrew is a crazy vocalist he's awesome and like we should we share members because noah plays guitar uh-huh. benny plays drums chris noodles plays bass as well for that band so they're, they're like our brother band but god Damn, they're good, man. They are fucking awesome. Like, they're doing the type of metalcore I like in a way that I love. And I'm just like, this is the shit right here. And, like, to see them get the reaction that they got at that San Jose show, I'm like, they deserve it. Who was, uh... The guy in Torture Culture, he has a podcast with another guy. What's, oh, yeah, what's yeah, yeah. that podcast called? Uh, fuck. I forgot. I follow them, too. Not, is it not Out for Justice? No. Um, Walking Blind? Yeah. Walking Blind. Yeah. yeah. They had 197 on recently. Chad Steven. That's yep. my dog. And, uh, he was in Ruin for a minute, too. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sadly, I tried so hard to make that Super Bowl show. 
hurt so hard. Yeah. You know what? Wasn't he in Darsum as well? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, 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 he yes, he did. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. Well, he wrote like some of those songs too. He said he's like, I like going to these local shows because if if someone or if no one wants to put a voice out for these smaller bands, I will. Yeah, and I just fucking respected that so Steve, much. Yeah. Steven Steven is like a true like. Legend, like he do, he films most of the time when he's filming local shows. He does it for free. Hero in the game. He just, he just films. And I want to say something about him too. Mm-hmm. I tip my hat to him because every single, every single set that he films, he cranks it out as soon Dude, as possible. A hundred percent. I love that. His turnaround, especially now. Dude, he'll he'll have he'll have sets out the night after, like the night of the show. Dude, yeah. like the knocked loose. Everyone was like, "How did he do that?" He had it out that night. Which is fucking crazy. And for that, I will give him all my respect. Absolutely, dude. Steve, like Stephen, genuinely is one of the reasons why people get into hardcore the way that they that. do, is because he's like he is the only person on the West Coast who is documenting shows the way that he is at the level that he is and for free. For free. Yeah, for the quality free. is also amazing. He's only getting better, which is crazy, and he's editing for Hardcore now too. Really? Yeah, he's 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 the, the official hardcore editor. That's so yeah, he's yeah. he's the fucking man. Like, so you know those video walls at LDB? Yes. He did tsunamis. He did hands of gods. He did twitching tongues. He did a couple of them. Like he does graphic design too. And also, he is a sleeper photographer. He takes dope ass pictures as well. And he's also a sleeper as riffer too. Like when he was in Ruin with Dragons and Demos, and he was fucking cranking out them riffs, brother. He he is a secret thug riffer. His so, last show with you guys was at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's it? What what do you think it'll take to get him behind the behind the strings again? <sighs> Honestly, because like we we kept him in Ruin. We wanted to make it work, but he was just too busy. So I'm just like I understand completely. Like he's like guys, like I want to be in this band. Like y'all are my friends, but like. I just can't right now. I'm like, dude, I understand. Like, you know, obviously I love him to death. He's still my homie. Like, I owe him Korean barbecue. We got to go soon. But, um, <laughs> dude, like, because, like, he did our promo photos and he was like, we were like, like, how much you want the photos for? He's like, let's just go to get barbecue afterwards. Like, yeah. He's like, yeah, just, 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 just get my plate. I'm like, say less, bro. So, like, he's the best, man. And, you know, he plays for Dara Sum on and off when he can. But, you know, like, like, we even told him, like, yo, dog, like, if you got time, you want to rock a gig with us, just let us know, dude. He's like, yeah, absolutely. So, whenever he wants, he can come back and play with us anytime he wants. Because, like, it's like an open door policy of just, like, let us know when he wants to play. Because, like, he's the man. He, I, I actually talked to him one time. I just asked if he has the gibbets for the Crocs. Yeah. He was so nice about it. Yeah, he's the best. He's the nicest dude ever. He was like, hey, Dan, sorry I don't have any right now. Yeah. But I will have some tomorrow. And I was like, sick. Yeah, he's the best. He's just so nice. He, he seems genuinely nice. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a difference from like being nice and then you can tell that they're genuinely nice. He's a very genuine guy. He, and like he, his work ethic is crazy. His content and output is crazy. Like he is truly like a hero of Southern California or even California in general hardcore. And, like, he'd be traveling to fests and shit and just, yeah. like, filming him out. Because, like, now he's actually getting, like, paid gigs where, like, like festivals will, will hit him up and be like, can you film our fest? And, like, we'll fly him out and, like, pay for his That's flight. And, like, so it's awesome. Like, was was he at Unrest Fest? Was he at Unrest? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. Because I could have sworn it. I, I don't I, I don't know. I, I don't know offhand. He might. He could have been. I know he was recently at a fest where it was pretty far away. It was across the country almost. I think I, that might have been not Bang on the Rock, but it was like 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 an Oklahoma Midwest fest that he filmed. Yeah, because yeah, like he he he. It's he the Wild West. West Wild West fest. That's what it was. Yes, he was at Wild West fest. That was a few months ago. Yeah. But he, he, he went to another fest. It might have been a rest fest. Of a, of a most more recent, mm-hmm. probably like about a week or two ago. Yeah, he, yeah, because I hit him up about it because I was like, yo, how's the flight? He's like, yo, chilling. I just got cooked out. Like, he, dude, it's even got cooked out every day. It was awesome. But I it might have been unrest. I'm not totally sure. I'm sure, I'm sure he put it in the Discord, but. Yeah. But going back to the pod thing, you had mentioned earlier you have yes. a podcast of your own. Mm-hmm. What, what What's that about, dude? dude? So it was – the podcast is called Strawberry Death Machine. Okay. And we, we've been going for about four years now. 
and like we also have like a YouTube channel that does like reactions. We don't do as as many reactions anymore, but like did reactions for a minute, and it was like kind of the same shit, just like bullshit. Because originally it was supposed to be like to put on for like local hardcore bands and like shows and shit. Yeah. And the show has kind of really evolved to like to kind of become this this other thing of just like kind of us just bullshit and then recording it, you know, like kind of what you guys are doing, like just talking about whatever, talking about like current events, video games, movies, whatever, kind of whatever we want to do. And then, like, you know, obviously we travel. Like, like we filmed a vlog for LDB that we're editing right now that we're going to put out. We did one last year. Like, we're, like, we're filming, like, show vlogs and, like, talking about, like, our bands, our friends' bands, like, getting guests on. Like, we, intervie- we interviewed um, Kyle from Body Snatcher. We interviewed Colin Young pre-Hard Lore when, the, when God's Hate record dropped. Um, we interviewed Sam from Marked Life. We interviewed, like, a bunch of homies, like... Just like dope ass people that we wanted to just like talk to. And who's we? So it's myself, um, Justin Brown, who plays bass in Ozai, and he plays bass in Marrow. And then uh, these two guys, one of them, Garrick Foster, he is a guy that I met in high school. I went to high school together. We've been friends for almost a decade. Like, he's one of my best friends ever. And then um, Gabriel Ramos, who's a friend of ours who Garrick met at PCC in college and um, Garrick and Justin and Gabe used to live together uh, Garrick has since moved out but, they, but uh, Justin and, and uh, Gabe still live together so they were like the original core members of well me, Garrick and Justin were and then once he moved to the new spot, Gabe moved in with him and kind of became like one of our best friends ever. So we, he jumped on the podcast and like we got him into metal and hardcore the same way. I'm just like, come to a show. Here's some bands. This out. So he's like fully in now. So it's awesome because like because like he grew up a hip hop guy, but he's still like in like goes to shows, goes to hardcore shows, like still supports and stuff like that. So all of us just are like still on the same page and doing our thing. You know, awesome, it's nice. it's very cool. It's the bros. It's the bros. I love it. And it's like, cause it's like, you know, we want to be the same people on and off the pod, which was just like, like people that just like sit in a room and you press record and it's the same shit, whether the cameras are rolling or not, you know? Cause like, I hate putting on an act. I hate fronting for people. Like I hate like, you know, cause it's like, you got to keep up that same energy outside. Cause like, we're, we're fortunate enough to like have people that like, like us and like want to hear content from us and stuff. Cause like we have our own discord server. We have like, like when we went to LDB, like when we traveled for fest, people like, yo SDM, like, yo, what's up dude? Like, it's cool to like have that kind of reception. And like, even now, like we're still kind of doing whatever we can when we can. Cause like, obviously we're getting really busy, but we still make time for the pod every week. We still do it every Tuesday. That's like, awesome. and, and we do it live. We, we just stream it to YouTube. Four years and counting. Huh? Four years and counting. That's yeah. badass. Strawberry death machine. Shout out. 140 something, 150 something episodes. Something crazy like that. Yeah. So it's like, we're, we're, we're going, going strong. Might be more than that. Actually. I don't know how many episodes we have, but it's been, it's been going. No, we it's gotta be the twos. Probably in the twos. Yeah. Probably more, even more because we've been doing it every week for it's four years. Yeah, so it's got to be probably somewhere in the twos. Yeah, and plus like we got a bunch of like videos, and it's cool because like we've we've been able to use our connections by like dropping videos of like bands and be like, hey, I recognize you from X Y video. Like we went, we saw that band Paleface. They play Chain Reaction. They're like a beat down band from Switzerland. But we reacted to one of their songs like pretty early on and we went to the show and they recognized us from the video. Like, yo, are you guys from this channel? Like, what in the fuck? Yeah, dude, what's up? And like we were like, like kicking it with them, the hand out with them, like nicest dudes, genuine dudes, and it was like they saw it be like malevolence, same thing. Like they commented on our shit and we're just like, yo, this is fucking dope and like we're gonna link up with them when they come through on the eighteenth. And so like it, it's 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 awesome. Like genuinely cool. Like Levins played L- played LDB two years ago, and like we, we went to go buy a merch from the guitar player, and he like recognized us from the from the from the from the, uh, the, video. the video, and it was crazy. We're like, dude, it's awesome. I only put out one vlog, and it was at Sound and Fury, mm-hmm. and then weirdly it's our most viewed video, but everyone's like, dude, wipe the sweat. It's like, dude. <laughs> It's fucking hot out here, man. You're at a it fest. Is, so many people around you in the middle of the summer. I literally had, I had a towel. Yeah. I was wiping the sweat, I promise. 100%. Dude, 2022 was awful. It was so fucking hot. Oh, that was the dirt fest, too. Fuck. Yeah, it was. That was when Speed played. You just had a cloud of dust in front of the stage because it was so crazy and active. Isn't that what made them, like, huge? That was their first U.S. show ever was Town of Fury 2022 to 5,000 people, which is badass. How Dude. many people are at Sick New World? Like 10,000? 
more? Um, we're probably in that number. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. It was fun though. Like it was laid out well. Logistics were good. Like they they laid out they laid out the fest very well. Did they have code or code orange and knockers at the same time? Yeah. Dude, Code Orange, I feel bad for them, bro. It was empty when they played. That's fucked up, dude. Them and Vane both. Empty. Vane? Yeah. I love Vane. I love that band. Dude, I actually got lucky to see them when they put out the self-destruct thing. When, like, they were playing to, like, nobody. Dude, I saw them get this show. This show happened at a venue in L.A. called the Hi-Hat. It was Vane, Queensway, Ringworm, and Harm's Way on the post-human tour. And it was fucked up. Vane played a crazy, like, 10-minute set that was, like, legendary. It was awesome. Like, and, like, it's cool seeing, like, bands that I grew up, like, seeing play small venues, not, like, the biggest band, like, Turnstile. I saw it. So you, you guys have been to the, the observatory. You know that small, tiny-ass little room off to the side, the Constellation Room? Yes. I saw Turnstile in there. On my birth, my 18th birthday, it was yeah. Turnstile, Angel Dust, and Big Bite, at at, at that, at that in that room. I saw God's Hate in that room. I saw Code Orange in that room. That was Dude, the most really violent shows I've ever been to. From the beginning of like big fucking bands. So from your 18th birthday, I'm imagining this is what maybe 2017. Yes. 2017. 2016. To to where they are now. Yeah. Insane. Dude. Yeah. And it was crazy to see that they played the auto bar back in Baltimore. Yep. That was insane. Yep. Crazy type shit. Like, and that's why I still love Turnstile, man. Because, like, they're, they're still for the people. Like, they're not, like, a commercially, like, rock star ass band. You know what I mean? Like, they're not clearing out the back to the Sound of Fury uh-huh. for, because they showed up for whatever the fucking reason, you know? Because although their their style has changed a little bit, yeah. I still love it. But the thing is, mm-hmm. they're still a hardcore band at their 100%. roots. percent. And like, I never understood why people gave them shit. Because like, every dude, every what they're doing now was there from the beginning. It was always there. Like you listen to like Step to Rhythm, fucking. Uh, um, I ain't gonna leave you the wrong way. Take me out again. That was there from the beginning, bro. Like, why are you surprised they did a whole record of that shit? You know what I mean? If that shit works, that shit works. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. And like, and no one's doing it like them. I, I think it's the gatekeep culture. A hundred percent. And they're just like, oh, this band's big now. I gotta hate them. Which is dumb as fuck. The dumbest thing. Gatekeep people, not bands. But I, let me ask you this. Yeah. So with with all your knowledge, why do you think Turnstile made it so big, but TUI didn't? Genuinely, I think it was a generational thing because TUI, before they took a hiatus, they, they like ran shit. Because, like, dude, they played Sound of Fury when they came back um, when it was inside and it was like a dope ass, crazy ass set. But, like, they were playing all the time and like, they were doing shit just better than everybody else and, like, the same way that everybody else was, but, like, doing it in a way. To where it was so memorable and so unique that it was just like, damn, this band like has it, right? But then once TUI kind of started taking a break, hardcore moves very fast. And like once bands stop playing shows, like you kinda have to fight to get your place back. But like like they dropped Big Kiss Goodnight, and that's like a Mount Rushmore Classic. Hardcore album, period, across all eras. Like, like you could put Big Kiss Goodnight up against almost any hardcore record ever. Master Killer, Master Killer, hundred percent. It's like, cause like, it, I heard um, 
Collins say that it was the master killer of the 2010s, which it's hard to argue. I personally think it's Scared to Death by King Nine, but I would say it's like 9.910, you know what I mean? And so with turn with, with sorry, with TY, TY shows were very violent. Very aggressive. It was like TY shows were fucked up for a long time to the point where, like, that's why Justice was like, I don't really want to do this anymore because, like, people keep getting hurt. And like, I, won't, I don't want this to be about that. So they kind of went away and they came back, went away and they came back, went away and they came back. But, like, with Turnstile, their energy was just so much, like, it was so infectious and so fun and so, like, hey, like, let's have fun and kind of, like, like, to me, they're, like... They're very fluid on stage, too. 100%. But it's, it's like, the Bad Brains thing, where it's, like, they're, like, a modern... Or they were, like, a modern Bad Brains. Where, like, they were playing, like, modern hardcore through this lens of, like... 80s like kind of youth crew type shit and like 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 early hardcore type shit but still making it about like everybody needs to be included everybody needs to have a good time like be f- like have a good time and have fun and it just appealed to so many more people than TUI did you know and and, and like obviously no disrespect to TUI because they're one of the one of the most legendary hardcore bands of all time cuz like you know they they started kind of getting really really popular before my time uh-huh. and then when I started going to hardcore shows like seriously they just dipped, they had just stepped out so like they missed me like j- barely but at the same time when I was getting into hardcore all my old hands were like all my old heads were like if you don't like TUI no one's gonna respect you so you have to like TUI you have to like this but you have to like that bit like 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 if you don't fuck with TUI no one's gonna fuck with you yeah. personally they're on my top three all time for sure 100% it's 100%. It, it's hard it's hard to not have them on. like dude y- y- they're up there with nearly perfect discography you know what i mean like heat wave it's fine it's cool a couple tracks for sure but like it kind of it wasn't what i wanted to hear at the time like bang your songs on it but it's just it's not quite my cup of tea you know but again a couple tracks but from the a perfect demo to a perfect seven inch to a perfect debut lp to a perfect follow-up like that's crazy like it's crazy to see how much music TUI has released and how much yeah. how big they are because of it. You know what I mean? Because like they don't have that much music out. They have like less than forty songs out. What city do you think is like the not the Messiah, but like the, the Mecca? The Mecca. Do you think it's the Bay? Right now, I think it is. I think it is right now. I think I think like California in general is is the Mecca. But like you know, Spy Scale. <sighs> Tsunami, big boy. Whoa. Yeah, but like every every LA band, because like I love LA hardcore. Like, terror. In my opinion, terror oh, is terror is the greatest hardcore band of all time, bar none. The, that was going around Twitter for a while, right? Or it was it, like, who's the greatest it's hardcore still, band ever? It's terror. It, and it's terror. It's terror. Yeah, it's it's never not been terror. You know what I mean? Like, because like respectfully, I hate Breeze not a hardcore band anymore. They're a metal band. You know what I mean? And that's fine. That's totally cool. Like, I, I respect him for it. But, like, in terms of day one hardcore, never stop being hardcore, is still hardcore, still touring, still grinding, to Terror. Terror, terror is the, the best hardcore band of all time. There's, there's a quote that he said. Uh, Pat, uh, fuck. What is it? Fuck. Positive aggression. Yeah, positive aggression, positive music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely. Because that's, uh, that's literally what they are. Yes, absolutely. Like, like Scott's Scott has never been a fucking kill each other type because he's like he's he's like an old head from Buffalo. Like my favorite Scottism is just like more stage dives. Yes. I need more stage dives. Oh, Get over this fucking barricade. Like, I love Scott Vogel. Like Scott Vogel is like that. That is the blueprint for what a modern hardcore frontman should be. Scott Vogel, one hundred percent. See, there's, there's the more stage dives, and then there's, there's more the more kickboxing. Kick yeah, kickboxing, yeah. More kickboxing. More kickboxing. Yeah. I love Jay. I love Jay Mind Force, bro. Shout out. And, you know, it's like, but you, you, you go through a very pointed, very, like, straight pipeline from, like, bad brains to turnstile. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that pipeline is straight. Because it's like, Northeast bands... But, like, that, like, even the Northeast is so diverse, and like the bands that come out of like Baltimore, Philly, New Jersey, Long Island, upstate New York, like Manhattan, like, you have so many different styles of music coming out of such a small, like, gridiron. Concentrate, dude, gridiron. The fact that, like, there is a four hour drive between 
lifeless turnstile king nine neglect fucking um eternal sleep uh gridiron mind force buried alive it's, it's like a four hour like circumference of all the crazies you've ever heard marauder mad ball like you know crow mags the youth of today yeah. like all of that comes from a concentrated fucking area it's nuts like it's it's crazy it's, and like even California now is starting to become that it's like they're all feeding off each other 100% 100% and plus like and that, with everything there's like a healthy competition with you know bands but it's like at the same time everybody gets to eat you know what I mean? Everybody has to eat. So, like, there's no room for rock stars. I would imagine they're all homies in some sense. Oh, my God, yeah. Dude. You know? I'm, I'm yeah. sure some got some have beef with each other here of and there. Course. But, but yeah, for yeah. the most part, I'm sure they're all but pretty homies. Right now, I feel like everybody is in a place where, like, everybody's finally understanding that, like, everybody can have a seat at the table. There is room yeah. for all of us here. Because uh-huh. it's like, like, what's that expression? The rising tide raises all ships? Because look, cause look at it right now. Like, with hardcore in general getting so big... And getting so like popular, how many bands are doing well for themselves who five years ago would have wouldn't have even gotten a spot on yeah. you know a fucking Spotify playlist? You know what I mean? It's like stuff like that where you're just like, oh yeah, like something's happening and it's tangible, you know. And like hardcore is in the better place than it's ever have been than it ever has been. It's in a better, I guess, mindset than it's, than it's ever been because now. With all the new kids coming in, like yeah, there's the shitheads and there's the fucking losers and the burnouts and the and the soon to be hardcore dropouts. But at the same time, you're getting so many people that are here for the right reasons at the same time. You know what I mean? And like, you know, the tsunami kid bit aside, how many of those kids are going to find like terror or TUI and just fall in love with the ethos and the history and the actual like what hardcore really is about? But the gateway was tsunami or t- you know knock loose or yeah, we, you gotta you gotta get in somehow yeah exactly like I never criticize how long people have been in hardcore how how long or how, how they got into hardcore because the point is you're here right now that's all that matters if you're here and you stay here that's all that matters oh, and respect the scene you gotta, you gotta add that you you listen just like you don't know shit about if you watched a 30 second TikTok clip you don't know how the fuck this shit works like be respectful do your homework check out how people mosh what the etiquette is what the style is and just like learn from the old heads yeah. and find your old head like you'll find them anywhere like you start talking to people you'll find your old head hey, you're on so I'm on bro I'm saying dude I'm on like and and like it's it's kind of crazy to, to see that like I've become the old head for some of my friends because like my old heads are like in bands now you know what I mean and it's now that I'm trying to like pass the torch down to the, like to the next, the next hardcore generation because like hardcore generations are like every five years so like because I've been here for two of those hardcore generations it's like I'm seeing the kids that got in because of you know early like Vamakara and like Momentum and bands like that and then now bands like Tsunami and Knock Loose and all those bands are trying to get kids that are like 14, 15 in here and I'm telling them like check out Terror Put them on game. check out Madball check out this check out that like oh like oh like you fuck with Tsunami check out Bulldoze like oh you like you fuck with Knock Loose Blueprint. yeah like, like, like oh you fuck with Knock Loose check out Poison the Well you know what I mean like like showing them like the history like you know, do your homework bro like you know it's it's like it, and to me like the fact that I'm I, I even now I can never stop learning because like you hear you hear like well how did Poison the Will get their sound how did Neglect get their sound where did, where did uh, Mental get their sound from you know and you can hear all that shit and like they're like yeah I heard this this band that only dropped one demo 25 years ago and then broke up and never did anything again and, like that demo changed my life and now I'm like oh fuck now I gotta go on Discogs and find this demo you know then all that 30 people have heard but one of those people is the singer of my favorite band you know what I mean like and like finding bands that way and like looking at like thank you notes like when you buy a vinyl you buy like a cassette tape or like a CD if you open up the CD or open up like the booklet it'll have like thanks special thanks to whatever and like 
a lot of the times hardcore bands will just list their favorite bands. So now whenever we do inserts, we'll always put like special thanks to we inserted like 10 of our favorite bands. Like here's where we got it from. And like, you know, we do promo photos, wear band shirts and promos because it's like people are like, oh, that's a dope ass T-shirt. I've never heard of that thing before. I'm gonna listen to that shit. You know what I mean? That's why I found bands like The Killer. That's why I found bands like Weekend Nachos and like Nails and like bands like that where I'm just like, oh, I've never heard this band. That's a dope ass T-shirt. I wonder what they sound like. And you find a new band and you find out the guitar player that band plays in for other bands. I mean, you, you unlocked a whole new scene that you've never even heard of before. Like, uh... I like buying my girl merch all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, not that this Madre needs the, you know, like they need help. Like, oh, what the <laughs> fuck? Well, she be wearing like this Madre, and everyone's like, yeah. oh, like, what's that? She's like, oh, it's, it's my boyfriend's one of his favorite bands right now. Yeah, dude. And, 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 and it's, it just starts from there. And that's how it starts. And like those spider webs are what could potentially get somebody into hardcore that has never heard of hardcore ever. Like, dude, uh, when we played in Sacramento one time, this like young ass kid who was probably like maybe fourteen. We ripped the gig. We, we went outside to, like, set up merch and stuff. And he was like, yo, like, right now, you guys are my favorite band. He's like, you know, so this person posts on Instagram, like, tagged you guys, and you shared it. And I saw it, and I wanted to come see you guys because you guys come to my city. And I'm like, dude, that's, like, that's crazy. That's, like, dude, like, when Ruin played in Sacramento, some girl was like, yo, can you sign my CD? And I'm like, whoa. Like, that's crazy type shit, you know? Because, like, that's not, like... Like, we're just some dudes from Orange County, like, or, well, they're from Orange County, I'm from SGV, but, like, we're just some dudes, like, we're from dudes from dudes from SoCal, like, we ain't nothing special, but this girl is like, I fucking love your band, can you sign my CD so I can, like, have this with me and, like, show my friends this, and I'm like, oh, see, shit. And that mentality that you have, we're just some dudes from the OC, mm-hmm. it makes you so much more likable, mm-hmm. at least for me, you know? Yeah, because, like, like, we're not trying to be rock stars, man, like, we're doing this because, like, we, like... Dude, maybe one day we can play with Mind Force. Maybe one day we can play with like maybe one day we can play with our favorite bands. Like the only reason I'm doing this is because like maybe someday I can play with my favorite bands. That's all I want to do. I'm not trying to get rich and famous off this. Like I want to travel and I want to like play cool shows with my favorite bands. You're doing it for the love of the game. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing is I just want to play with my favorite bands. That's the only reason I'm doing this shit. And speaking of your favorite bands, mm-hmm. okay, in life, who is like your biggest hero? Oh fuck! Um, Doesn't have to be hardcore, just in general. Or biggest inspiration? Biggest is probably my mom. Like, like, like my mom. You know, single mother worked three jobs and I was a kid to support me. Like, has always been there for me. Always been like my number one fan, number one supporter. Like, every time, like when I started playing in bands, like she'd always make a point to come see my bands play. Like, she's seen every single one of my bands play at some point. You know, whether she's like. Where there's only been once or twice, but no matter what was happening, she always made time to come see my band at least once. Yeah. Always was like telling her friends, like, oh yeah, my son plays in a band. Like, she's a gangster. Like, she still even now works like, you know, 50, 60 hour weeks just to put food on the table, you know? And it's like, she, like, my whole family works, but like, she's still just grinding. grinding. She never she's stopped. The household. She is. She's my pillar for sure. Like, like, you know, like my mom has always been, like, the reason why I'm like, no, nah, I, I gotta, I gotta behave. I gotta like do, like, do shit. Cause like, you know, when you're like a little ass kid, like around the neighborhood, you get into antics, you get into, to, you know, messy shit. And like tomfoolery. In, yeah, tomfoolery. You know, le, le, less than than smiled upon activities. We'll call them. Uh-huh. And, you know, sometimes when shit get, like, shit got, like, at one point, shit got, like, really deep, and I was like, oh, fuck, like, I gotta shape up, because, like, I don't want my mom to be mad at me, you know what I mean? And so, it's just, like, stuff like that, or, like, like my mom has always been somebody who I've looked up to my whole life, just, like, she gave me work ethic, she gave me my earliest musical inspirations, like, she showed me, like, Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and, like, all that type of shit, and that's, that's kind of how I got into more aggressive music because she like had a big old like CD case and she was like have at it bro whatever you want to do I found Metallica Disturbed I found you know uh, Better Than Ezra Incubus like all like the 90s early 2000s shit and she was like whatever you want to listen to it's all it's all yours and that's beautiful to hear that mom introduced that to you because mm-hmm. that's typically the dad rock that yeah. that, that that everybody talks about yeah huh? dude and to, to find out that mom put you on mom put me on bro shout She's out like, mom yeah because like like when i would see my dad he put me on like you know 
Pennywise and like Bad Religion and like stuff like that. But like my earliest music was from her. She gave me like every because like she had a big ass of like a hundred CDs and she was like, whenever you want to listen to a CD, just come get it and put it in your fucking Walkman and just listen to it. I'm like, all right, cool. Because like I had one of those like with the over the ear headphones with the CD player and shit. She's like, whatever you want to listen to, just go for it. My my earliest music inspiration is from my father. Mm. It's. He had a little CD thing in his truck, mm-hmm. and that's the only time I listened to music because he wasn't very technological. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the truck, it was every Rush album. Love that. Every Led Zeppelin album, all the Sticks, oh. and Steve Stephen Winwood. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> On repeat. Unbelievable. So growing up until I was about like 14, mm-hmm. 15 when I bought my first phone, mm-hmm. that's all I knew. What? Well, let me ask you guys a question. What was the first, like, CD you guys ever bought with your own money? Like, the first thing that you ever bought like, with your money, like, yeah, this is mine. You oh, know shit. what? I'll go ahead and answer that first real quick because I already have it right on the top of my head. Love it. Love I it. I think we're going to so, the same answer. Big Bro. It's, it's Big Bro, you know. Obviously, mm-hmm. I wasn't making money, but Big Bro had money. Yeah. And first CD he bought, and I will attribute his putting me on yeah. to my love for heavy music yeah right? Fuck so yeah. he bought the Osman Cometh <laughs> you know with the golden cross on Hell it fucking yeah I do and as soon as we listened to that that was my introduction to heavy music Dude. and I fell in love that is fucking badass and so it was Osman Cometh and probably second CD he bought was All Hope Is Gone by Slipknot and oh my god that's it right there that's the blueprint that's all you need bro my brother he was at an EDM Straight EDM. I was too. So I was just on SoundCloud. Fuck, I remember what it was called. Dark days. Yeah. Dark days. So I'd be on SoundCloud, just listen to uh, listen to that. Just there was like a radio station on there, and I'd listen mm. to that on repeat. But the first like thing I actually bought was Eminem Recovery album. Oh, dude. Yeah. Beautiful. Wonderful. On, on my on my little iPod Nano. Wonderful. Sick. That yeah, that was my first one That's I ever bought. Fucking sick, man. That is so sick. I mean, coming from a family of immigrants, mm. right? It's like. I heard a lot of uh, Hispanic music in the household. Oh, yeah. That's all I heard. Hell yeah. So the heavy music was shunned. It yeah. was devil music. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so it's like, although I didn't get that introduction from my parents, mm-hmm. luckily I had Big Bro there. Yeah. And and you know what? I'll also give it to a neighbor as well. So uh, second grade, I, I had this neighbor who... Uh, he used to see us skate all the time, right? And he, mm. he was he was a lot older than us. Mm. I'm saying probably mid twenties at the time. Mm. I was in second grade. He was a skater himself. Mm. And one day he comes out. He had ripped a CD for us. No way. Ganga shit on it. Who knows what was on it, Whoa. right? But we put this thing into our um, CD players, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pantera, Love it. Metallica, Love it. and those are the two specific ones that I remember, right? And. I'll also give him the credit that he did 100% deserve. That is so clutch. Like, hearing Pantera from, like, your homie that just, like, lived next door, dude, that, like, that's, like, that's lore right there. You know, it's like, yeah, my, my, like, my neighbor gave me a CD that had Metallica and Pantera on it when I was a kid, and it blew my fucking ass. It's like, yeah, that shit's dope. Because we always saw him as, like, this old, this big tough guy, right? Yeah. He's like fucking hard. He's yeah. hanging out with these fucking crazy looking dudes. Mm-hmm. And so we never really talked to him. Yeah. And so for him to give us this CD and kind of like put us on game. That's tight. It's awesome. kind of like he accepted us. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And with this great music that was on it, dude, it was, it was even better. Yeah, dude. And that's the cool thing about like that type of shit is like, that's why like, I love sharing music so much because I'm just like, like yo, like... Like, th- th- I'm sharing with you, like, like this is mine. Yeah. And I'm, like, sharing this with you because I want you to appreciate it as much as I do. That's fucking awesome. It's all- a part of me. A hundred percent. Literally, like yeah. Piece of your soul. Literally, yeah. Literally. And it's like, and it's like yeah, like, I'm I'm putting you on and, like, I'm making you this to show you or just, like, to see if you can appreciate this as much as I do and, like, feel the way that I do. And, like, hopefully this makes you feel the way that I feel with this type of shit, yeah. which is, like. Going back to the passion. Yeah, going back to the passion. It's It all comes back to the passion brother since day one it's it's been like oh i like this oh i like this a lot oh i can like 
do this forever oh shit that's crazy you know and it's like because like my like my grandfather was like was like a real ass like rocker fool like he was in like hendrix and like the doors and like all that type of shit so like he had like would like play vinyl every like every weekend and then like you know the 80s shit and the 90s she was like my mom and then like when i when my mom was taking me like my first like show like punk shows and like rock shows and like that you find like local bands and like local punk shows things like that and then like it was downhill from there dude like to the point where like when i was i think 15 i had like i had bronchial pneumonia i was sick as a dog i was like almost hospitalized like super super sick but my my at the time my homie called me and he was like yo dog dead kennedy's is playing in santa Ana tonight do you want to go and i was like yeah we'll tell you what, like, like 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 let's let's do it he's like all right cool i'll pick you up in 10 minutes i'm like i'll be there snuck out of my house sick as a dog went to the went to the observatory to go see dead kennedy's just like but like it's that type of shit that like it's never the passion looked back. never look back like and we did that type of shit all the time. Like we like we'd sneak into clubs. Like when like when we were, we were in high school, we used to like take the train to Hollywood after school sometimes, and like just hang out in Hollywood like on like Sunset Strip and stuff. Because like all of us were like really into like the eighties like Sunset Strip vibe and like like the, the rock star shit. You know, like, when you're a kid, that type of stuff appeals to you. All right, everyone, we're sorry. Technical difficulties, like always. Not really. We we're maxed out on storage. My fault. My fault. <laughs> Hey, we're, getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, 100%. One step at a time. But uh, this is the one time I, I can actually say this, and someone can actually tell us something. What do you have planned for the future that people can check you out? Uh, dude, at Ruin OC on Instagram, we're dropping a two song promo sometime this summer, and we're going to do an EP sometime after that. So, yeah, at Ruin OC, um, at Ozai.hc, and uh, Third Sex Reunion coming soon. So. Sergio, I yes. know we didn't give you the proper intro. It's That's been a bad. pleasure having you here. Dude, thank you for having me, man. Honestly. Wait, we never even said your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, like this this has been like one of the dopest things I've ever done. So thank you guys for having me on. Yeah, like I appreciate you yeah. coming anytime, on, man. Dude, anytime. Like we'll do part two sometime whenever you want. Just let me know. Awesome. Like Yeah. You guys, it's been Daddy's Dungeon. Uh, oh, and it's done. <laughs> it's done.